All right, everybody. Um, it's a late night live stream, but it's a pre-production live stream. For everybody out there that's listening to me that may be in the chat room, uh, let me know if you can actually hear me by putting a one in the chat room because I want to make sure that you'll be able to hear the video clearly before I begin. So just put a one in the chat room. Let me know you can hear. I definitely appreciate that. What's going on, Lowcast? Thanks for being here. Maycomb, thank you for being here. Thrilling stories. Good to see you here, sister Sandra Brown. Miss uh, Miss Washington, thank you for being here. And then uh, who else do we have here? Um, looks like um, we've got some buffing going on. A little bit. So we got uh hello everyone. Oh, we got uh Tommy Treats. Treats uh, has a really good uh, YouTube channel with delicious food, just great food. So folks, definitely check that channel out. It's good to see you over here. You have 24 hour food uh, preparation on that channel. Great, great food, delicious. Uh, then we got my man Quest, AKA COG. Um, good to see you here, brother. I'm gonna start up the video tonight. It won't be a super long stream because I know it's late. This is a pre-produced pre pre video. Hope you enjoy. Uh, today is Labor Day, as you all know. And uh, people usually go out and barbecue and all that kind of stuff. And uh, But we got to think about um, what this day really means as it relates to black people. So let me begin the video. And uh, it will start off with my usual uh what's going on uh robin the girl wonder and i see you rock waller morris thank you for being here la city thank you for being here let me go ahead and uh start the presentation i hope this i think i hope all of you can hear too Labor Day has every goddamn thing to do with black people. It's just a history that they don't want us to know about. They keep us out of it. Okay, the black history behind Labor Day. Labor Day was a byproduct of the boom and strike of 1894. Boom and supporters who were black men working hard. They say in America that black people don't know anything about working hard. We do work hard. Labor Day is all about us because gave our labor for over 500 years during slavery and agriculture building this country from the ground up but nobody gives a damn about our history 
nor do they recognize it. And in some ways, we recognize it ourselves because we are culturally conditioned to see ourselves as inferior and white people as superior. But let me break it down to you. Come on this journey with me. Let me break it down to you. stories of A. Philip Randolph. A. Philip Randolph was a member of the NAACP. He was a man that was a rights worker in particular. He is, I think, a father of labor because it was black men during this time that took up and stood up to fight against what was right against what is wrong. And A. Philip Randolph was behind that. Many say that he was the real muscle and strength and real mind behind the march on Washington. Not Dr. Martin Luther King, although we praise Dr. Martin Luther King and lift up to him. A. Philip Randolph was a big reason behind the march on Washington. And he, along with the Coleman Porter Group, are the reason why we have some of the labor laws that we have in this country today that many people benefit from and that we give credit to black people. Now, like I said before, the Pullman strike of 1894 when the president at the time was in Cleveland was hoping to gain political allies. So the president in Cleveland was trying to gain political allies at this time in order to, what you say, Politicians are. They are whores when it comes to the vote. So he was looking to get political allies by honoring the rail workers who were black men. However, the story about the involvement of black porters, Pullman porters, in the labor movement of the time is not always told, not even told to us today, folks. The Pullman porters were, as I said before, black men who worked in the train cars, attending to white passengers, performing such tasks as shining shoes, carrying bags, janitorial services. During this period, this profession was the largest employer of blacks in the nation and constituted a significant portion of the Pullman company workforce. Theodore R. Johnson states, despite black porters being significant, a significant part of the Pullman workforce, they were not allowed to strike and were also denied access to the labor union. That's why unions are important. And you see they're trying to get rid of unions today in this country. All right. Now, this led black railroad workers to form their own union. It's called the Brotherhood of the Sleeping Car. Remember this, folks. Look it up. The Brotherhood of the Sleeping Cars. Porters, which, were, which was the first black union in America. So our first black unions were the Pullman Porters Union, brothers who worked on the railroad. And another history is that do you know that these men, these brothers, and these brothers who worked so hard in their labor for this country, they would call them George. That was the name that they would go by. The white people would say, hey, George, could you get me this? Oh, George, could you get me that? Oh, George, can you shine my shoes? This is truth. This is truth. So the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, which was the first black union in America, A. Philip Randolph, as I spoke of before, was the first president of the union. And he was also the brains behind the first march on Washington, as I mentioned before. The march ended up being called off after President Roosevelt met with Randolph and other civil rights leaders. The event was canceled because President Roosevelt signed an order barring racial discrimination in the federal defense industry. Remember when black men were not allowed to join the military? And matter of fact, when they were allowed to join the military, they were once again given medial jobs and they working in the kitchen. 
being janitors, any type of labor work, because at that time, that's how white people saw black people. They brought us over here to uh, use us, use our labor against our will, and they continue to do so as we believe that we are so-called free today. Now, this was a major win for Rand Randolph and other civil rights activists as it allowed many black people to get employed in industries that they were barred from. It would not have happened if it were not for black workers fighting for equality in the workforce. While folks are enjoying their Labor Day <laughs> holidays, you know, a lot of us, we celebrate Labor Day by going to the park and barbecuing and barbecuing and eating and filling our bellies up, but never really realizing that Labor Day has more to do with Black people's contributions to this country. Our labor, our hard work is how Labor Day really got started, but it gets lost in the sauce and down, and then down the years, as laws were passed to allow black men to be recognized in their unions, then they turn around and don't allow black people to participate in activities in this country doing segregation, even though it was our people who brought great rise to strengthening unions in this country, gave rise to equal pay. Now I'm gonna say this again, while folks are enjoying their Labor Day, okay, let's make sure it's very important that we pay respect to those who fought for you to enjoy Labor Day. Because these same folks that allow you to be able to barbecue in the park and drink beer and allow you to be able to have unions and get fair wages, you owe this to my people, my ancestors, black people. See, people come over to this country and they ride on our coattails. They benefit from the things that we have built and then they want to come to this country and disrespect black people. Oh, hell, oh, no. Just ain't going to go down like that, you see. Like I said, these brothers couldn't even use their own names. They would be called George. Okay, brothers paid a heavy price in the day to get us where we are today. Now, let me get more into what porters were all about. It's very important. Now, there's five things we need to know about Pullman porters. First of all, there was a brother who was alive, who was the oldest who passed away. He went by the name of Lee Gibson, okay? As the oldest Pullman porter to die, it is time to reflect on the proud legacy. We have to reflect on the proud legacy of African-American workers. So when you think about Labor Day, keep in mind, Black people, let's recognize the sacrifice that our ancestors, that our people, our grandfathers and grandmothers and fathers and fathers more gave to this country. Now, an unnamed Pullman porter worked at Chicago Union Station in 1943. Now his name, I stated before, his name was Lee Gibson. For nearly 40 years, he was forced to respond to the name, as I stated before, George. All of them had to respond to this name, George. He was forced to respond to the name George. Gibson, who died Saturday. Now this is a brother who died some time ago, and he died of the, at the age of 106 years old, 106 years old. This brother lived to see a lot of changes in this country. This brother lived at a time when he wasn't even allowed to vote. This brother has seen a lot. He passed away at the age of 106. He was thought of to be the oldest striving Pullman Porter as of Ann M. Simmons writes, for the Los Angeles Times. So this was an article uh, in the Los Angeles Times written by Ann M. Simmons uh, about this brother. Now let me state here, he was one of the thousands of African-American men who made Pullman Porters a mm, unique part of American travel. But why is it worth 
me talking about it right now, black folks, because we owe a lot. And I'm going to keep repeating this. We owe a lot to our Pullman porters. Now, Pullman porters were much more than men who carried bags for wealthy train riders. For nearly 100 years, Pullman porters helped define railroad travel within the United States. They were highly respected within the community. Yes, if you were a Pullman porter in the black community, you were looked up to as if you were damn near a doctor, a lawyer. I mean, they got paid well uh, for the time, of course, for the time that they lived in. OK, they were well respected in the black community. They operated on a code, which is something that I don't know if we ever going to be able to get. If we are going to get, be able to get back to my people, black people, but we've got to. Um, Look at the history. See, this is why history is important. Now, I've been on panels where people will tell you we got to stop worrying about our past and go forward. We keep living in the past. If you don't understand your past, you will be doomed to repeat the negative parts of your past. You must know your history to know what's happening all around you today. And that's a damn quote from James Baldwin himself. Now. Within the community, Robinson, professional professor of African-American history at Georgia Mason, George Mason University, and a guest speaker, upcoming National Museum of African-American History and Culture, tells the Smithsonian they became in many ways, the port, we're talking about the Pullman Porters, they became in many ways the middle class of African-American, of the African-American community. Pullman porters were so important, their stories are still sought out by historians eager to document their contributions before it's too late to understand their legacy in the United States. Hmm. Now, this is the five reasons that are very important. Did you know that the first Pullman porters were slaves? So they had their ancestors, ancestry, and slavery. Pullman porters accomplished a special place within American history. Now we got to remember that they should be seen, but you know, you hardly hear anyone um, talking about it. They worked at the mat. So when you hear people say that black people are lazy, that we don't want to work for anything, that we don't work hard, that's a lie. Okay, Pullman porters worked in very difficult conditions. They were work, they were demanded upon in their service. They had to do it with a smile on their face. Okay? Pullman porters had enough strength to unify amongst themselves and fight against the poor uh, working conditions that they had to deal with. I just think that Sometimes we take for granted our history. They were forced to answer a name that was not their name. I'm going to say it again, George. Do your history. Look it up. The first Pullman porters were enslaved. They were slaves. Let me. Uh, the George Pullman industry. Industry was a pioneer. The world first popular sleeper train was obsessed with bringing luxury. So one of the reasons why they were called George is because the train industry at that time was owned by an individual named George Pullman, an industrious who pioneered. He was an industrious who pioneered, I'm going to say it again, world first popular sleeping train travel. Because remember, um, much how we travel by plane, uh, when trains became, uh, in, in trains industrialized the way people traveled in American society and around the world. And uh, down today, we travel mainly uh, by plane, although we still have trains today, but the train um, industry, I think if I'm not mistaken that the uh, Rockefellers um, were involved in a little bit of all of this kind of stuff, the banking industry, oil, of course, and trains. Now, I might be wrong about that. But I just think uh, we think about Labor Day and we do realize we can we do realize that there's some things about Labor Day that doesn't speak to black people today and that black people were left out of a lot of opportunities and a lot of 
uh, a lot of right to be able to celebrate with the main mainstream society because we were kept out because we were in segregation. I just want everyone listening to this broadcast to realize that Labor Day is more about black people. This actually, and I know it's going to sound weird because I agree with Sister Lisa Carbero when she did her live stream, but digging up the history for myself, I realized for myself personally, and I hope for those of you who will do the research, that Labor Day in a lot of ways has more to do with black people in this country, particularly black men. And I think some of us forget that or may not know that because let's be honest, they don't teach us this type of history in schools. They lie to us. They keep everything hidden from us to keep us blinded to their will. So this to me is powerful history. Now, let me say this right now. Despite routine discrimination, a job at Pullman had real benefits. Pullman reporters were well-traveled, okay? They rubbed shoulders with America's elite. They were, um, you know, they were a part of, a, I guess, like a brotherhood amongst themselves. Although, it's funny, black men could be Pullman porter, porters. They could rub shoulders with some of the elite of American society, but yet in the bigger society, they were segregated in their own communities. And don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm one that believes that in some ways black people were better off when we were segregated than being so uh, what do you call it, integrated into this society where some of us separate ourselves in our tribes, whether that tribe may be Democratic Party, Republican Party, uh, Baptist. Uh, 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 whatever religion that you believe in, we separate ourselves in our groups and we need to find commonalities. Now, these brothers that were Pullman porters, I'm sure they all had different religious backgrounds. I'm sure that they all had politi different political views, okay? But somehow they were able to bring it all together with the help of A. Philip Randolph, who I believe is the father of labor, we owe him a debt of gratitude as a country, as a people, because along with the Pullman Porters and his hard work as an activist, and, I, and he, and, and, and this, don't get me wrong, the NAACP is not anywhere near what it was when a brother like A. Philip Randolph was doing what he was doing. Okay, it is not the same NAACP today, but it shows that black people unite despite our differences we can make something powerful happen. And the brothers that were the Pullman Porters, they did so. They created one of the first, they created a labor union, which is the blueprint for many labor unions today. They did what necessary, they had to sacrifice. I'm sure that they took a chance on losing those, what they would call at that time, good paying jobs. Now, this is another thing that I know about the Pullman Porters is very important in their history. Uh, like I said, train travel was a primary, a primary mode of transportation in the country up until 1950s. That's right. So they had so said so in a time when many black men lacked mobility standard work, Pullman porters were vital source of community information. Oh yeah, they would let they were like grills, okay, like the African grills. They would give information. They would report back to the community, okay. Pullman porters were best known for bringing African American newspapers like the Chicago Defender or the Pittsburgh Courier. And I've heard these newspapers. These are powerful uh, black publications, which unfortunately we don't have any powerful black publications today. We've got the Grill, the Root, and TV One. And <coughs> let me stalk and cough at that. They're not doing anything that these papers were doing back in the day. I would say for those of us on YouTube, we are like the Pullman Porters of Information because we're giving information from all parts of the corner of the world that we live in, collectively coming together to discuss issues and then bringing up issues. Now, Lisa Carabaro brought up a powerful live stream today that knocked me off my socks when she talked about maps and how the maps in this country are all wrong. We have North and South all wrong. So when you're, if you're a Muslim and you're praying to the East and you live in America, what you think is the East is not the East because they've been messing with everything. 
Okay, it even goes down to what uh, brother Khalid, uh, uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad said. He said, we don't know what time it is. We don't know how old we are, what year we're really in. The calendars have been manipulated. We're not even working on the right time system. So we just been bamboozled and uh, run amok and uh, hocus pocus, <laughs> pull a rabbit out the hat. I mean, we really have. So these papers... These African-American newspapers, the uh, Chicago Defender, the Pittsburgh Courier, back in, in – in, they would bring those these papers back to the community when they would kit these communities throughout which the train tracks ran through different southern states. Um, they would bring the newspapers so that black folks could know what was happening in Chicago, which was happening over here. Uh, they were bringing the information, and I call myself Information Man. Okay. The Smithsonian. Okay, let me uh, continue here. Those newspapers, the black newspapers, gave Southerners, as I said, the trains would run through the South, would give Southerners information on how and where they could escape the segregation and violence that they were experiencing here in America, living in the South. So even at this time, we're talking about the early 50s, late 40s, we're talking about around that period of time. Black folks were still catching hell in these southern states way after so-called, um, well, not so-called, but after slavery was over. And we went from slavery into a period of reconstruction, into Jim Crow. You know what that was about. We had black codes. We had black people couldn't go to this school. You had to drink out of this water fountain. You couldn't go there. You couldn't do this. Uh, how many of you out there even realize that in some places in the South, if you were a black person, and a white person was walking on the sidewalk down the street. You had to get off the sidewalk and walk in the streets to give them the full path. Oh, yeah, there were codes that had to be followed. The black people had paid a hell of, hell of a price. So when people say to black people, What's, why do we have an attitude? Why do we keep talking about racism? And even when you've got uh, 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 black people who will question us, you know, black folks who kind of who have kind of brought into this system and believe in this system, they will ask us, why do we uh, complain about these things? We have a goddamn reason to complain about these things. We have a long legacy in history. And so it's important to know your history, pass this history down to your, to your young children so that as they go out into the world with pride and who they are, with dignity, their head up looking forward, they know who they are, but they also know their history so that nothing can be repeated in their future and they will know what's going on around them that looks similar to what happened in the past. That is important. That is information to open up one's mind. Now, Pullman porters worked long hours. And then sometimes for low pay. Now, I said earlier that in some cases, this was a good job because it was good pay for the time. But let me backtrack this because my information is now in feeling that they sometimes would work long hours for low pay and also came with the poor importer's job a description. Okay? Porters dependent on patrons for tips. So when we get on YouTube talking about super chat me, super chat me, give me um some money. Help me out with this. I got Patreon. Look, these black men went through a hell of a lot more than we did. Okay, so when you are not happy about getting your Patreon or your super chat up, don't be upset. We do have, we do need to support each other as black people, but these black men, sometimes the biggest part of their pay had to be their tips, and they had to put that shine on for white folks. You know, that's how it was back then. And for those of you that would say, oh, I would never do that. I would never shine. Uh, don't, don't lie to yourself. We're living in the 21st century. We're doing a lot of things today to try to make it, to make ends meet. Let's just be honest. They did what they had to do to make ends meet. Did not mean that they were cowards because they fought with creating a union to battle back. You've got to give them respect. And their battle is the battle of what we so-called call today Labor Day. Now check this out. Pullman porters were required to work 400 hours a month and often had to work 20-hour shifts 
with only three or four hours of sleep between they had to pay for their own food. They didn't even give, see, they had to pay for their own food, do unpaid uh, proper work, uh, simplify their own uniform. So they had to, they had to pay for their own food, their own supplies. I'm sorry, they had to work for their own, they had to spend money on their own supplies and spend money on their own uniform. So food, uniform, none of that was paid for. They had to pay for it. And they did not, they did it in railroad cars, which they themselves would not have been allowed to travel in during Jim Crow segregation. So in some cases, they were sleeping on the railroad cars, the same railroad cars that their ancestors would not be able to sleep. So during segregation, they wouldn't allow you to be on these, these type of cars. But these brothers had to endure that type of treatment. We got to give them a hell of a damn respect. African American history in the culture will feature a segregation Pullman car that de demonstrates the conditions in which black passengers were forced to travel while black Pullman porters attended to white guests. So at the African American Museum, Smithsonian, and Washington, D.C., you're going to see a depiction where black men, let me, now, now I have it correct now, folks. Black men and working as porters on train would have to tend and grin and shine to white folks while their own people, when they would get on these trains, would be in poor conditions traveling across this country. That's what segregation brings. This is American history. This is the world that we live in. Now, Another thing that's important, I'm going to repeat it again. They eventually unionized. In 1925, a group of porters decided they had enough of poor treatment. They went to a, a, to a Philip Randolph to promote labor rights, to push labor rights, to advocate, to ask him to help them form a union. The union included a little celebrated group of Pullman workers, female maids, see, sisters. See, black men and women have to work together. It was black sisters who also got involved in this protest. See, we have to work together. We cannot separate each other, separate ourselves from each other. And I know we have some problems that we're going to have to work out in our relations with each other. But damn it, throughout history, black women have always been there for us. Those black women are for that are for black men. That's what I'm talking about. The union. So we had the female maids who were often expected to spend time babysitting white children on the job. Mm, 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 mm. But this is what we've gone through. This is what I wanted to bring up to people's mind, to open up one's mind, to understand what the Pullman reporters went through. You see this picture of this brother that I've got up here. He's gone through a lot, I'm sure, in his life. This is the brother, Lee Gibson, that you're looking at, the brother that I that I mentioned before. He uh, died at 106 years old. He's the last of his kind as a black man, as a, as a Pullman porter. He's seen a hell of a lot. Uh, the brother gave his soul to his job, he gave his soul to this country that does not love us. And that's okay because... We have to love each other. We have to love ourselves. I'm not in the business of trying to get people who don't like me to love me. That I've been past that a long time ago. But I wanted to bring up this history. I was inspired by listening to Lisa Caraballo's um, live stream. And I said, let me do a little bit of research because she was making some very good, powerful statements about why we should not celebrate Labor Day. But then I said, let me look into it. And now I, re I realize with my research that Labor Day is something that black people should support as it relates to black unions, black Pullman porters. We should celebrate these brothers and what they did because what they did and an A. Philip Randolph helped us. It helps us today. It gives us a perspective and there's many things that we benefit today 
that was created by our ancestors. We must not forget that. Once again, I'm going to remind you, the union that they formed was called the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. Hmm. Now, when they did this, the company that they worked for, it attempted to sway the African-American community to bust the union. See, this is the, see, that's what I'm saying. These tricks are not old. They're trying to bust unions today. Now, I'm, I'm a part of a union at my job. And there was a woman who won a lawsuit in which she said she didn't want to be a part of the union. So now you have a Supreme Court justice who states that people don't have to join unions. If they have, want to, they have a choice. They can still get the protection of the union. And what that does is that breaks the union up because if they can destroy your numbers, uh, people say, hey, I don't want to pay union dues. Let me just uh, get the benefits without paying any dues. And oh, I don't even want to be a part of it at all. What happens is that dwindles our, our numbers as a union. And when you have to negotiate for better pay and fair treatment and workplace environment, you won't have the power because politicians look at numbers. They look at, do you have the juice to get the job done? Do you have the juice to get them out of office? So here we are in the 50s, early 50s and 40s, and you have a situation in which these black men created a union and you had these companies owned by white people, of course trying to sway the African-American community to bust the union up. Isn't that interesting? Now, let me break this down to you. It took more than a decade for the union to sign a labor agreement with the Pullman. So it took more than a decade for them to finally give in. Isn't that amazing? It took more than a decade to sign a labor agreement with the Pullman. But when it did, the union was both recognized and better in a better condition. It was the first African-American labor union to succeed in, in brokering a collective bargaining agreement. It was the first African-American labor union to succeed and break in, bar, in, in creating a deal for collective bargaining agreement with a major corporation. Now, don't we have collective bargaining today if you are part of a union? And right now, if you are a state worker or a federal worker, you're pretty much the only groups that have unions nowadays that they're trying to bust these unions up. So they are the first ones to be recognized. It was the first African-American labor union to secede mm. and to cut a deal with a major corporation and win and help lay the foundation for future civil rights era. So with the Pullman Porters did laid a foundation for the civil rights era and for more labor situations to improve themselves. So that means that everyone today in American society in the 21st century, 2018, whether you're white, black, Asian, Latino, whatever, if you're on a job and you have a union, if you're on a job and you're getting good wages, if you're on a job and they're fixing your work conditions, you owe a debt of gratitude to the black men of this country, the Pullman Porters. So I don't want to hear nobody talking about black people have a legacy of being lazy, that we don't want to work. Bull crap. This is why we have, this is why we get angry the way we do. This is why black men have a chip on their shoulders and we get angry sometimes and we have to speak loud because nobody listens to us. Nobody understands our history and what we've gone through. With that said, this is the information man. Understand your history, people. Understand your legacy. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. We got the info. So, whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info man. You can call him information info man. He can knowledge all the British nation. We ain't lose the job. You can bring your hate team, but if you want to win, please don't bring your debate team. We talk to Japanese shogun. Edge takes old mix of African yoga.
All right, everybody. Um, hopefully, if you can hear me, I appreciate everybody being with me this late night. I didn't want to make it a super long stream. I know it's a Monday night. Some folks got to go back to work tomorrow. I would have done this earlier in the day, but I had family stuff to tend to. Uh, I had my daughter with me this weekend, so I got very busy with that. At the same time, trying to prepare this and uh, my goal, it was spontaneous. So if I would have done this, put this together a uh, lot earlier, I would have done this probably sat maybe Saturday, Sunday. Well, I would have done it earlier since today is Labor Day or it was Labor Day for some of you that are living in the East Coast and other parts of the time zones where uh, it's now Tuesday. Uh, but uh, it was purely spontaneous because of the uh, live stream by Lisa Carabero. She did a great job on that live stream. And what was fantastic about her live stream, and it was something that I always was aware of but didn't really go deep into the surface of it, is when she talked about the fact that we've been taught the wrong way that we see maps. Okay. So uh, she showed a map that was produced in the 70s that you don't see anymore. And it pretty much shows that what we think is the West, for example, what we think is the West is actually the East. And what we think is the East is actually the West. And what we think is the South is actually the North. And what we think is the North is actually the South. The map that she showed, it showed everything turned around the opposite direction. It's something that they, didn't, they don't want people to know about. And she made a good point, too. She said, even if you believe in flat earth, if you're a flat earther, even if you are a flat earther, a person who believes that the earth is flat, even your perspective and how you see direction west, south, east is all wrong, even on a flat earth uh, map. Everything's wrong. They have been bamboozling us, bamboozling us, <laughs> excuse me, folks. Uh, they've been doing this to us for years. You see, see, when your enemies control the education, they can control your mind or they can control what is put in your mind, what you believe. So like me, like all of us, we all came up through the school system, whether it be public school or private school. If you were lucky enough to go to a school, I know that the Nation of Islam has their own school where they teach their young black children uh, science, they teach them mathematics, uh, they get them on the right track. But for those of us who haven't been blessed with being able to go to a school that is uh, that speaks to our culture, and if those of you in the chat room have gone to such a school, uh, put a one in the chat room if you've gone to a school. Be honest about it now, don't be honest. If you've gone to a school where you were being trained by people that looked like you, uh, giving you more of a pro-black or a black first or a Afrocentric type of style of learning. Uh, press a one in there. Now, I'm talking about you being under this type of learning since you were a child. Not, not, like, not that you went to college like me and you started to get introduced to uh, you know, black history and black sciences and all that sort of stuff. Now, as a child, I've always been around people who had this sort of knowledge. What's going on, Classic Ruby? Good to see you here, sister. Uh, I've always had this kind of knowledge, but it didn't really start to crystallize in my mind until I got older. And when I went to San Francisco State University, I have a minor, I have a minor degree in African studies. And I learned from Dr. Ova Tashaka, Wade Novos, Dr. Professor McGee, who was the one who taught me uh, melanin. He had a, we had a course that I took on melanin which was actually the best course in all of my years in college. Unfortunately, the brother, he uh, passed away. Then there was Angela Davis, who spent about, I think, one year at my university uh, teaching. And then uh, Dr. Richards. Uh, I, I've had some fantastic professors. And then uh, those of you who are familiar with a bookstore, it's a famous bookstore, well-known, because that was the bookstore where we got a lot of our, uh, our Black history, our knowledge. And that's Marcus Bookstores, Marcus Bookstores, which was in San Francisco. I believe there's one in Oakland, California. The one in San Francisco, unfortunately, closed down. Now, the family that owned Marcus Books, I knew them. I knew their kids. I went to school with their, with their daughters, their son, um, who, uh, by the way, unfortunately, 
isn't with us anymore. But I went to school with them, uh, and they've had, I mean, they they had incredible books in that store, incredible stuff. And the Marcus Bookstore is actually or uh, was located in the Fillmore area of San Francisco. And then there's one in Oakland, if it's still there, that's in the same area of that bark station where those sisters unfortunately were killed by that beast, uh, the stabbing that happened in uh, Oakland. That bookstore is in, in the same area of where this unfortunately took place. Um, it's about 10, 18. I don't know if I should have a uh, panel or not. Let me give some love to uh, someone who said something to me in the chat room. And if you are new, if you just discovered my channel, you're new to the channel, go right ahead and subscribe. You're welcome here. What's going on, Miss Reed? Good to see you, sister. Uh, if you're a new subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Um, if you um, if you have social media, share this in your social media. Uh, let me say what's up to the real Aaron Collins. I hope you're doing fine. I see you in the chat room. I want to say what's up to CRU. What's going on, brother? I see you out there, brother Frank. Uh, Hood Mistress Reloaded. Uh, this sister, uh, Classy Ruby, I've got to get her on my show. She's from Canada, I believe, and I've been hanging out with the brother over at LMP. I think it's the, uh, what is it, Love Machine Power? Am I saying that right, Classic Ruby? I want to put give some proper respect on that brother's name. Is it Love? No, no, it's Live Machine Power, right? Live Machine Power. I've been hanging out over at the brother uh, channel, Live Machine Power. He's trying to build his channel up. He's having live streams. He's bringing people on the panels. I think tonight he wanted to have a ladies only. Yeah, life machine. Thank you. Let me correct that, folks. See, I'm being silly here. My, you know, I'm an old man. My memory's starting to lose it. Yeah, it's called life machine power, folks. Now, look, tonight the brother was trying to have a ladies only panel, and he had classic Ruby on there. And the sister is brilliant. She's uh, plans to go to school. If she's not already in school, I'm pretty sure she's already in school. Her goal is to become a psychiatrist, if I'm not mistaken. She's very intrigued by psychology. And I work in psychology myself. I work with psychologists and I work with psychiatrists as well. I'm a, I'm a rehab therapist and I deal with guys in the prison system who have mental health issues in California. And I've seen a lot of stuff. So I have to talk to this young, this young lady because she is destined for great things. I'm going to bring her on the channel and interview her. But I want uh, folks to definitely uh, support Brother uh, Life Machine Power. And so to the ladies out there, like Cookie, what's going on, Cookie? Good to see you here in August Dream. I need you. I need next time the brother, I'm going to talk to the brother and have him have another ladies panel. And I want people like August Dream. And I want sisters like Cookie and Sonia and all these sisters that I see in here. I want you all to go over to his channel and be a part of his ladies only panel. Matter of fact, he's given me a great idea. It's, I haven't done panels a lot. The first panel I did was just what this past. Um, what was it? Friday when I had my man, uh, my man uh, Miles on B Miles 84 of the conscious channel and shout out to him right now. So what I want to do is um, I want to have a ladies only panel myself. And all I want to do is just uh, moderate it and let the ladies talk themselves about whatever's on their mind. Uh, it's not for me to interfere, but simply moderate. If things get out of control, you know, act like a referee or a referee in the ring. And you go back to your corner and you go back to your corner, lady, and you go back to your corner, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I want to do and let the ladies talk about whatever issues uh, or on their mind. So I'm going to be looking for a lot of the ladies who follow me in my chat room and follow the channel to get from behind the chat room and come on to a uh, panel. And then I'm going to have again, um, hey, we got uh, David, Davis Angel. What's up, my brother? Now, this brother is in the Philippines. A uh, good brother that I had. I had the I had the blessings of meeting him on the panel the other night uh, at Brother Life Machine Powers channel. And so let me just say this: Brother Life Machine is trying to build his channel up. He's doing streams. I think 
either two or three times a day. The brother is working hard like James Brown. OK, he's the James Brown of Canada when it comes to YouTube right now. He's he's working hard. And what I want to do is I want to I want to get this brother some support to build up his channel. What I like about Life Machine Power is that he's got a very calming effect when he interviews you. He doesn't over talk you. He's very calm. He's got that Caribbean accent, you know. <laughs> uh, so I'm down with the brother. I'm seeing great things for that brother. Uh, let me let this let you all know that uh, great things have been happening for Information Man. I've been making great connections. I had a chance to talk to Dr. Amumba personally. She's a sister that has a great YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get her on to the platform. Um, I got to make, uh, I had a chance to be on BGS's uh, live stream. I think uh, they put me through a, uh, a brother art, if he's out there. They put me through a cyber, uh, they put me through cyber pledging. Right. I had to uh, I had to earn my bones. So I went on his platform. It was about nine or ten of us on there. And you had Brother Charles and you had Angry Man came on and C.O.R. C.R.U. was on there. And it was a bunch of brothers. And then, of course, you had Brother B, uh, Brother BGS. And, uh, you know, and uh, and I know he's a very pragmatic brother. He likes short. He likes answers that get to the point. He doesn't like you to be wordy. He wants you to be logical in your in what you say. And. I, I stayed on the I stayed on there as long as I could because I had some family things that came up, but I had to leave. But I stayed on there and and I brought up questions. I I, I was a controversial figure on there that night. And they they try they uh you know they threw the heat at me and you know and uh brother Charles the uh, I think he's a brother in Baltimore. I'm from Baltimore originally, and I haven't been. Uh, he was asking me what streets, but I can't remember streets because it's, I haven't been back home in a long time, and my family has moved around. Um. But that brother, he drilled me real hard. And then he said, Info Man, you know, I love you. So they gave me a they gave me an initiation. <laughs> I'm being initiated into this YouTube community in this world. So I went over there with the big boys, too. And um, <laughs> they initiated me big time. But they I, I, I believe I won a lot of respect because I held my own. I wasn't, a, you know, I, I didn't cow down. I was respectful because I know BGS. He doesn't like a lot of nonsense, but I was respectful. And you've seen me over uh, in O'Shea's uh, channel, and I like I like going on there because I like being able to connect with other brothers in the YouTube that are that are you know that are pretty well known YouTubers and and, and get that respect and, and 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 debate with them. Now I was on O'Shea's channel this past week, and we had uh, you know him, Minister Jab was on there, and he was saying that he don't care about Africa, he doesn't uh, want to go over there, he doesn't think it matters. He says, what has Africa done for us? And I have to admit that the brother made some really good points. Um, but uh, I think we can't afford to separate ourselves from Africa. Uh, if, if anything, if you have a chance to travel, see it for yourself, get a perspective from yourself, not a perspective from Europeans or a perspective uh, from American society. Um, and maybe you can, if you have the money, you can do business over there. I mean, they're they're open. From what I'm hearing, uh, hearing with Brother Dynas of Search for Uhuru, shout out to him. Uh, he's saying that there's opportunities. I uh, list. He's been. He was just in Africa not too long ago, and I believe he was in uh, either he was in Ghana or Kenya. He was in one of the countries over there, and he was talking to a brother who's been living over there since the '80s, who was driving him in the cab. And he basically told the brother, they're waiting for you. They're waiting for brothers and sisters in America to take advantage of the economics. See, we can go over there and build it up and say, hey, I don't want to, I want to build it up. We can build it up for ourselves and we can benefit with our connection with our African brothers and sisters. That's if that is how you see it. If you don't see it that way, you have a different perspective because we, you know, America, we've got some history here. Hey, I'm not going to argue with anybody, but I do know that black people were from this whole planet. And so uh, anywhere in the world we choose to go, we have the right to go to. Uh, I know that Chinese are over there and I'm going to do a video because I'm very disappointed right now because they had a big meeting of all the African countries. Did you see it? It was on the uh, some of the new two YouTube uh, channels and they were meeting with the Chinese and they're going full throttle with the Chinese with their partnership. I got a problem with it. You know why? It's called art of the art of war. I believe that China is doing art of war on Africa. And if you know China, 
if they're investing money in Africa, when you invest people, what do you expect to get? Okay. Thank you, uh, Brother Dubian. He was in Nigeria when he was being, he was talking to a brother in the cab. You probably saw the video, Brother Dubian. And the brother in the cab was breaking it down. And, um, but look, if you think that China is running a game on Africa, put a one in the chat room because I believe that they're going to use uh, art of the war on Africa. And if you look, you judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. If you look at how China treats its people and treats its own country, what make you think they're going to be equitable with Africa? And when you invest in a country, you want to make money. So what if Africa is not able to pay back the loans for the light rail or the train systems, all the infrastructure that they're building? They want a return on their money. And if they don't get a return, what do you think going to happen? Africa is going to be in debt to China. And when they're in debt, they can take any and everything that they want. Read a book called Economic Hitman by John Perkins. You come over to a country and you say, I'm going to give you foreign aid. You act like you're going to be lovey-dovey with the country. And then eventually, you know, the country can't pay the loan back. So you say, OK, we know you can't pay it back. So this is what we want you to do. We want you to give us this, give us that, give us that land, give us that land pro bono free as a collateral for you not being able to pay what we gave you the first time. It's like sharecropping. You know, black folks were sharecroppers. They would get seed on credit. Then when they didn't come through with those crops, what would happen? They would be in debt to the same land that they were slaves on. What, Af what China is doing to Africa, in my opinion, ain't nothing but sophisticated, what I would call sophisticated sharecropping. <laughs> we're going to build you up. Then when you can't pay back, we're going to take back that which we want. That's just my opinion. I don't know how some of you, let me see. I suppose in the fake pro black says we black Americans should invest in Africa. I agree. Now let me get back to this uh, COU. Let me see. Some folks were, were, were ringing out my name. I apologize. I've been talking in my mouth. Let's see. COG. Yeah. I hope they, they ain't scared you. They be tough. No, no brother. Look, 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 look. When I was on BGS's show and I said, look, what, 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 what they what they was uh, saying, what, what we were talking about that night. And I said, look, what they were doing, it didn't scare me, brother, because um, I deal with criminals for a living. And so when you deal with criminals and you work in a prison system where you got guys that can shank you, stab you, guys that are murderers, I deal with people that murder people. Now, BGS said to me, yeah, but have you been to Iraq? Now, and I said back, well, of course, I haven't I haven't been to Iraq, but I know I've been here in America where you can die as a black man on the street from cops. So I haven't been to Iraq. Of course, I haven't been to Iraq. I'm not in the military. I chose not to join the white man's military. That's me. OK, but I'm still dealing with criminal individuals that will kill you. So um, so that little whole situation that night uh, did not intimidate me because I deal with master intimidators every day at work. Uh, this stuff doesn't intimidate me. Intimidation, brother, is when you've got three kids to feed and you got bills to pay and you're wondering how you're going to pay the rent, how you're going to pay the water bill, how you're going to get to work if your car breaks down. That's pressure, brother. That's stress. Getting on YouTube uh, with, with, with some brothers debating about different things in the world and your philosophy and people challenging you. That ain't no that ain't no uh, intimidation, brother. Come on. I'll, and guess what? I'll be back. <laughs> OK, I'll be back. <laughs> that just gave that just pumped me up because now I know what the score is. I know what the game is. I know how they get down. So the next time I go in there, I know what to expect. And I'm always a person that rises to the occasion. But I'm going to stick to what I just said in there. The government that we're under does not work. Now, BGS asked me, folks, OK, how would you create a government? And he made good points first. And he, he, he reminded me of this first. You have to determine the needs of the people. What are their needs? What kind of infrastructure do they need? You have to think about plumbing, sewage, 
all those type of things, right? So just as the BIO platform states, we need land, you need infrastructure, and you need nationhood. Now, once we get the infrastructure, we figure out what do the people need. Then, like BGS and I were, like BGS stated, and I understand it well, once you get infrastructure under control, meaning housing, what kind of houses are you going to have? Are you going to have dome housing? I remember listening to Brother Hollips on his show uh, as part of the BAIO, which I am now a member of. Um, we're talking about building the right type of housing, dome-shaped housing, right? He had a brother on there who had a complete breakdown that answers all the questions that BGS was talking about to me. He had the breakdown of uh, plumbing. They were on there talking about plumbing, electricity, uh, various things to build a nation. And he had the plans, he had the breakdown. Um, and the cold goal is to use the resources of black people that are part of the organization. So if you got black contractors, black lawyers, you're gonna everyone's talents will be utilized, whatever their skill set is. So BGS made good points. You to the question is, and then people say, Well, where would you live? I simply said, Well, the most sensible thing that makes sense to me outside of America would be Africa since we have more of an ancestral connection to Africa. But at the same time, um, we're from all over this planet. Wherever we go, it belongs to us regardless. But the question is, how do you build a society? Now they asked me what kind of government I would implement. And I couldn't, I said the best, I said personally, I would implement, and someone made a point of this, a hybrid of, a hybrid of many different types of structures, but one, in which, and I kept saying this, a government in which you don't have people being judged by whether they have or they have not. A government in which people truly are invested and have investment in the system. A government that is truly for the people, by the people, and down for the people. A government that's, now, I know they were saying that, you know, Black people, we always have these utopia thoughts about a nation, right? But the fact of the matter is, what we have right now does not work. And I said on that show, I said, I would want people with fresh ideas, because if you look at the government in America, all they do is recycle the same people year after year. Even when Obama ran for president and he kept saying that he was going to do he was going to be different, that it was going to be hope. Yeah, right. He ended up doing what? He ended up keeping on the same people that were from the Bush administration. Then you got Donald Trump who went running around talking about he's not an insider that he's an outsider, he's a businessman. And if you look at everyone that he put in his cabinet, they're all big business, which he said he wasn't a part of, right? Now, GB, uh, uh, B, B, uh, uh, BGS said to me, well, when you have a government, it's important that you have people who know the lay of the land. And I agree with him, you know, when you create a government, it is good to have some people who know the lay of the land, but, how will you ever get fresh blood if you don't bring people up the ranks to give them an opportunity to implement a new way of thinking, a fresh idea, a way of thinking? Now, he made a good, he made a good, he made a good point here. He talked about the Matrix. In the Matrix, the movie, the question he asked of me was, what was keeping the Matrix in place? What kept everything in order? And BGS stated that it was the machines, which is true. I really believe that The Matrix was really a religious movie more than anything else. Uh, it was a religious movie because Neil was like, you know, he was like the Jesus character. Uh, Morpheus was like the, uh, you know, a Pasipho, a, a prophet, right? In The Matrix, the God of The Matrix was, you know, you had the mother of The Matrix, and you, had the, you had the father of The Matrix. So I thought those were sort of like the God characters. So in a lot of ways, The Matrix, if you took the bells and whistles out of that movie in The Machines, you're looking at a religious movie. You put the machines and the bells and whistles on it, you're looking at a sci-fi movie that has some remnants of a religious uh, philosophy, Neil being the one. They kept talking about going back to the source, right? Talking about uh, Zion, this city that was underground. The earth was destroyed. No one knew what year it really was, just like Dr. Khalid Muhammad talks about, just like we're living in right now. We're living in a world right now where we really don't know what's happening around us because they have manipulated our calendar. The original calendar that we operated off of was the solar calendar, right? Um, 
everything that we've been operating off of is something that he, that Europeans or humans have created. I just saw a video with O'Shea and Dr. Uh, Mumby. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. He's over in Africa with her. And I, I talked to him and I talked to her. She's a pleasant uh, sister, a uh, beautiful sister. And I got to talk to uh, brother uh, Wada Maya, uh, who's a brother that's in China. He's over there with O'Shea right now. I had a chance to talk to the sister, though, and uh, she's dynamic. Um, so thank you for that statement, brother, uh, that guy from Texas. So, um, so BGS made good points. He said it's the machines that keep everything in order. And without the machines, people would go crazy if they saw that the real reality of the world they lived in was a world in which the earth, the sky was scorched, that there was no houses. Everything was destroyed because humans destroyed the, destroyed the whole damn planet. And so it was the machines that had to keep the illusion. You know, that's why you saw people inside those pods with machines feeding them intravenously and keeping them in a what? What did, what did uh, Morpheus say, uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character say? He said, Neil, you've been living in a dream world. Yes, but the Matrix is based on the, of a, of a what, let see, this the uh, cave by Pluto. Yeah, but did you know that the Matrix is written by a black woman originally? Hollywood stole the script from a sister. It was a sister that came up with that script first. You're absolutely right, Cookie. Cookie states that you, yes, but the Matrix is based on the, uh, she said, the uh, allegory of the cave by Pluto. Hmm. If I'm saying that correct. A little tired tonight, so I'm slurring my speech. Yeah, why am I? He's a good brother. Why am I? He's a real good brother, uh, Brother Duvian. So, so BGS posed these questions to me in terms of saying that if the machines did not take care of everything for everyone, people, what's going on, Marlo's Corner? Uh, if you like good boxing commentary, good boxing analysis, go check out Marlo's Corner and subscribe to his channel. What's going on, Brother Art? Hey, Brother Art, I'm going to get in contact with your brother uh, sometime tomorrow so that I can set up the live, the live with him. I got some good stuff coming down the pipeline, folks. I got good brothers like Art that's doing a great job at uh, talk. He's been, me and him been corresponding. And he's uh, hooking me up with some of his contacts that he has. And uh, we're going to do a show on, uh, hopefully, if he can get this brother, we're going to do a show on old school hip hop. I'm not old school hip hop. Old school lock dancing, break dancing. We're going to, we got a brother that's a, that's a legend that this brother Art knows or has contact with. And we're going to try, I think, with the help of Brother Art. And he's in the chat room right now. Um, he's got the beautiful um, James Brown avatar. With the help of this brother, we're going to get this brother who's a legendary break dancer, lock, pop lock, locker. And I used to break dance and pop luck and do all that stuff myself back in the early 80s. We're talking about 83, 84, 85 and all that kind of stuff. You know, back in the day, I was doing my thing as a youngster in my teenage years in the early 80s, that is. So oh, hopefully we can get that going, brother. And we got audio discourse coming in here. What's going on, brother? Let's see, exposing fake pro black. I used to break dance in 1984. Okay, so if you broke dance in 1984, brother, that means that you're of age like myself. Yeah, I was doing my thing. I was doing that break dance, and I was, I was into the run. That's when run DMC, man, run DMC. All that I went to a classic rap concert back in the day with LL Cool J, Public Enemy. Remember X Clan? I'm taking y'all back now. X Clan. Then you had a uh, 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 who else was it? Oh, uh, X Clan, LL Cool J. Damn it, there was somebody else. Oh, oh, Salt and Pepper. Oh, and D Nice. And uh, if I'm saying that names right, and then uh, and then what's the uh, what's the other sister? Um, What's that sister? She was a female rapper. I think uh, Queen Latifah was there too. Oh man, that's back in the early '80s. I was just probably in uh, sixth grade or something. Man, I'm telling you, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. Who knows? But I was there. Okay, beautiful. Lock from the 1970s. Yeah, locking from the 1970s. I got. Hey, Art, we got to get that brother on. Um, this is the thing, man. I got so many. I got so many people I want to interview. But damn it, it's like I don't. It's like I want to do so much, but I ain't got enough time. It's not. It's only. It's only so many times. So many days. So many hours in a day. 
you know? So, <laughs> so much I want to do. And I just got to manage my time between my personal life, family, you know, uh, my daughter, and then figuring out the time to get people on and do these streams. So if it's taking me a while, folks, believe me, when I do it, you're going to love it. How many of y'all love the interview with brother uh, B Miles 84 Conscious Channel? He will be back on again. I was in his channel today and he says he's got to come back. I got brother uh, George Makem who I will be getting on as well, and then Brother Moses. Um, these are good brothers. It's, it's just a lot of good brothers out there. And then our Life Machine Power, I will eventually get that brother on. Like I said, make sure y'all subscribe to him. Audio Discourse is in here. Make sure y'all check him out too. Um, let me see. We got Brother uh, Newton Couple. Hey, what's going on, brother? Let me... Uh, and let me let me just uh, give you a little love here, brother, before I end the stream tonight and go peace to you. Peace. So what 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 I'm going to do just to let you all know, I did join the B.A.I.O. Um, so the thing about the B.A.I. the B.A.I.O. is that I can still rock my brand. And also rock their brand or our brand. And then it allows me to get involved with my local California chapter and utilize the skills that I have to benefit the organization. It's an organization about the, up, the, the, uh, the improvement of black people, the nationhood and the independence of black people. And you can't go wrong with that. And I joined because, look, anything that I can do to help the black community, black people, is a win-win in my estimate. When I was listening to Brother Hollip the other night, he said, whatever your skill, he said, look, if you're a brother that wants to use your YouTube channel as a way to, to, uh, to talk about what the BAIO is doing, do so. I will be doing that. Henceforth, the logo that you saw in the video, henceforth, the logo that you see in the corner side, um, and my man Lions, then he joined the um, the BAIO as well. Okay, Brother Duvian says the second concert was New Edition. Yeah, New Edition is the was the bomb back then. But you know what I always notice? <sighs> All the ladies back in the day, they just loved them some New Edition. You, <laughs> oh boy, them guys, as soon as their music came on or those guys who came in concert, they wasn't thinking about your butt. They were thinking about New Edition. What's going on, Quest? All music is by Quest, C-O-G. He's the producer of the music that you've been hearing me play. Uh, so get that, brother, some props. Uh, Sister Rosalind has been a great supporter for me. She uh, often uh, sends me messages. Uh, sends me articles and things of that nature. So I want to thank her. Lisa Carabero, wherever you are, you inspired me to do this video tonight when I listened, looked at your video and check her out. She's a, she's a well-known YouTuber. And I talked, she talked, I was in her chat room today and she said, hey, Info, we got to do a live stream together. So I've got to go back to her channel and do the live stream, but I got to get her on my channel to interview her and go deep under the surface of who Lisa Carabero is. So I love her. She's been um, fantastic. Nicole Ali, if you're out there, peace to you, sister. Brother Logic, Brother Drop, drop Straight Drop, if you're out there, peace to you. You know who I've been getting love from too, folks? That's why I'm saying a, a lot of good things have been happening for me Uh on YouTube. I mean, there was some drama some time ago, but you know what? You learn from the drama, you move forward, but you always keep your one eye open. Always. You always keep an eye open. But I've been getting a lot of love from a lot of different well-known YouTubers, and I really appreciate it. You know, I'm not getting, I'm not getting, I'm not getting a big head. I'm gonna still stay grounded. I'm still gonna keep the common touch of interacting with people. I don't care how big or small your YouTube channel is, I'm gonna support you. If you're positive, which is why I support my man, uh, Life Machine Power, and I support people like that that are positive, uh, that are trying to do something that can be great. And I figure, think about it like this: if you develop 
relationships with people that are small YouTubers now, though some of these small YouTubers are going to become big YouTubers and are may become pretty, you know, pretty well known. You never know what can happen to people, especially if they're on their grind. And to me, I'd rather be loyal and support someone that I was there for when they didn't have anybody, right? They just building a channel up. And then when they're there, when they're big, I'm still there for them because you just never know what some of these people on YouTube who have small channels, you never know what they may become. And us as black people, we need to connect with each other. YouTube for us has been our way of communicating. Like I said in the video, the Pullman porters would bring newspapers to all the different southern states to let everyone know what's going on in the north, what's going on in the west, right? We as YouTubers are bringing the newspaper. I'm here in California. Some of you, we got Classy Ruby who's in Canada. I'm on the panel with her the other night, and it's amazing how I can be in California talking to somebody in the East Coast, talking to somebody that's in London, like my man Black Ice. I got to get him on. He's in London, and the brothers are very pro-Black. But to be able to talk to someone in another state, another country, how we're connecting with each other, and we're like the, we're like the Grand Underground Railroad, getting information to each other to enlighten one another. That is what it's all about. That is what I'm trying to do. K Hill, thank you. Keep going, brother. Hey, K Hill. K Hills, thank you. Anita B, classic Ruby. Yes, they are. Anita, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. So I know I'm going on and on with my diatribe right now, folks, but I just wanted to speak to you all because I respect everybody who has been supporting me. Now, let's see. Classy Ruby says, August Dreams, hmm? I'm uh, remember that salt and pepper. Yeah, salt and pepper, man. You know, they're great. I, I went to an old school rap concert last summer with Sir Sir Mix a lot. Uh, Julio, Coolio, Coolio. Uh, salt and pepper. Remember rapping MC? Rapping MC was there. Lisa, Lisa, and Coke Jam. Remember them? Oh my God. Remember that white lady who sung that song, uh, Take My Breath Away? I can't sing, y'all. Take my breath away. Way. She, I mean, old school songs, man. I mean, remember that group that said, love you, love you? Now, here I am singing, making a fool out of myself. I can't sing. Let's see. CR, information, man. I don't agree with you. One and a half the time, but we working for the same thing. You inspire me. Keep it up. Okay, C-O-G, I mean, C-R-U, what do you not agree with, brother? Just say it. Let's talk about it. What do you not agree with? Because what you think you don't agree with, that's, I want to know what you don't agree with. Tell me what you don't agree with, because maybe I said something that you didn't understand, or maybe I said something wrong. Tell me what you don't agree with. Let me see. You must be in my mom's generation. She was so in love with Lisa Lisa. Yeah, I'm from that generation. I love Lisa Lisa and Coke Jam. But CRU, you said something about you don't you don't agree with something. Tell me what it is, brother, so that I can see whether what you're saying is true or not. Come on now. Let's have um let's have uh let's have a nice debate. You must be in the come on, CRU. Let me see. What did he say here? Information Man Show, I don't agree with you one half at a time, but we're working for the same thing. You inspire me. Keep it up. Okay, I'm inspiring you, but what you don't agree with, brother? What do you don't agree with? <laughs> I may have to bring you on the damn panel to talk to you. What you don't agree with, brother? Huh? Now I'm bringing you on. Now I'm challenging you. <laughs> Where you at? CRU, where you at? Yes, I got beat for you. I got I got beats for you intro and will help with tech free. Just use it to help the movement. Okay, brother. Hey, but uh, what is it that you don't agree with? Matter of fact, you know what? I'm gonna just you know what? Let me just bring you into the chat room, man. See what you're talking about. I think I got you in my system.
All right, I gave you an invite, CRU. Come on in. I should be ending this uh, stream so I can take my butt to bed. It's only 11 o'clock out, 11 o'clock Western time. I'm only going to stay on here a little while longer if I bring folks on board. Maybe I'll leave a, um, what should, oh, I think I'll leave a uh, link in the chat room. Maybe I'll do that. Come on in, brother. Come on in. Let's see. CRU. Let me uh, get this link from my email. What's going on, brother? Yo. Now, brother, you're saying you want you are down with the cop. I may have to bring you in here. Oh, mute your sound, brother. Mute that sound. Now, I, I'm I trying heard to get on there, man. Hmm. Where you at? Yeah, mute that. Mute that sound, brother. Mute that uh, extra sound. <laughs> I can hear myself talking in that background. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess he's uh, gone. Let me give some love to somebody else in the chat room. Patience. What's going on, Patience? What's going on there? Let me... Uh, Say peace to you. All right. Classic Ruby's here. Brother Dubian's here. I think, and Miss Reed, I miss Reed. Mrs. Reed, I see you in there. Rosalind, I'm going to give some love to everybody again. I'm going to end the stream unless someone wants to come on and talk to me. Let's see. CRR, he said, uh, what did he say? What did he say? Uh, now close your mouth. Because you cold busted. Who's cold busted? Do the link. The call only came to my phone. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Hey, a uh, hood mistress, who got cold busted? Hood mistress, who got cold busted? Let me see. Newton, couple of them. Let me see. Got to check out two. Will review channel. White dude rode from Morocco to South Africa. West Africa has very wet like terrain. As soon as you get to Angola, it's nothing but beauty. Wow, in the Congo. You know what, brother? You 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 said a mouthful. That sounded fantastic. Juicy. Just joined. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, patience. I appreciate you just. I appreciate you just joining. I really do appreciate that. You know, we're trying to build something here with everybody. Here, I'm just gonna put a link in the chat room if someone wants to come on and talk to me for a little bit, because uh, I'm gonna have to end the stream. So let me see if I can. Uh, what am I? All right, I know what I gotta do here. And I'll just do it by going right into Okay. There you have it. I'll just be on for a little while longer and then um, it's time to go nighty night. I got to get up super early in the morning. CRU, if you want to come on and talk to me, brother, I want to know what is it that you don't agree with so we can see what I want. I'm curious. Supposing a fake pro black, we have to stop being tribal as black race. The goal is black unity. Yeah, you're damn right. Uh, exposing fake pro black. You're damn right. You're damn right. Let's see who else is in here. This is pretty good for uh, this time of the night because I know it's late all over the um, 
all over the place, probably. And if you haven't, make sure, if you haven't, go ahead and hit the likes if you haven't already. Cahill, yep. Let me see. Well, maybe I'll call it quits. I don't think anybody wants to come on and talk, so I think I'll call it quits. I did send that out for a COU to come on and talk to me, but I'm curious to know what did Hood Mistress, you said someone was cold busted, and I want to know who you was talking about that's cold busted. Brother Duvia says, I'm at work now. Be off soon. It's 1258 in Louisiana. Wow. Hey, K Hills, is everything okay in Louisiana? Are you guys dealing with any flooding and stuff like that? Or any type of... No, 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 I'm tripping. It's summertime, so you guys shouldn't have any problem right now, right? I'm tripping. It's summertime. You guys shouldn't have any problem. What's up? What's up? Hey, what's going on, man? It's my first time. It's my first time on a live. I'm definitely looking busted because I don't know how to change it. It's okay. <laughs> if you don't like the way you look, do you have an avatar? You can just change it to your avatar. Just hit the little, uh, it has a thing for like a camera. And you just click that and it, it'll highlight it and it'll put your avatar up. But you look, you're looking cool, brother. Don't trip. Yeah, man. Well, um, I just want to talk about, you know, the, the, the reason why a lot of us, pretty much want to explore Africa because I feel like it's it's the new frontier. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like just being black is, you know, it's a coincidence and I feel like it's, it's also, it just adds to the the journey. Mm. You know? I and, um, there's, there's all types of things that are going on over there. In Kenya, I just seen this guy fly um, a man drone. You know, him and him and like five other people. And it's about to be like Star Wars out, out, out in Africa. <laughs> you know what, man? I hope that Africa, I think that uh, from what I'm seeing, it looks like I think Africa is the future. I think, Af okay, you got your avatar up. Yeah, it looks, looks much better. <laughs> <laughs> I think Africa is the future. It, I think people better not sleep on Africa. See, this was that. This what I, I I think is going to happen. I think you're going to have some black folks in America that's going to sleep on Africa. That's going to tell other people, "Hey, don't invest in Africa. What you want to go over there for? What you want to check that place out for?" And what's going to happen is when Africa blows up mm. and becomes viable, then you're going to have black folks in America that was hating on it. They're going to be saying, how can I get in? <laughs> how can I do this? How can I? And by the time they wake up and realize, it may be too late for them. Mm, that's, that's true. So don't sleep on it. Now, hey. that doesn't mean that some of us right now are going to be alive to see that. I'm prepared to realize that I may not be alive to see that. That's just the reality. Because we don't, because, uh, you know, I want to live forever, but I ain't going to live forever, you know? Hey, hey Info Man, reality is here. Okay. And you're seeing it now. Like, really? Like, I lived there for three years. Oh, okay. Uh, my job, you know what I mean? They got a they got a spot out there, too. And they're using drones to, you know what I mean, send, send uh, lab samples and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Medical and things like that, they're already more advanced than us. They're using mm. it for the medical. We're not using it for medical over here in the U.S. Mm. Uh, we're backwards over here. In some ways, we're backwards. But as mm. Brother BGS would say, we got the infrastructure, though. We got the we. Like he said, um, when you flush your toilet, your toilet will flush. Right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, well, I was, I mean, will be built. Their infrastructure will be built up with time. Yeah. I, I, f I feel like the difference between um, the Western countries and Africa is that, you know, Africa has yet to enslave its own people. And, and you know, enslave, being enslaved to go either way, it, it's, it's having that workforce. China was, was able to, 
you know, it's they were able to enslave their own people, meaning, you know, adding them to like a, a major workforce that that now's bring their economy to like number one. And and even they're even going into Africa and they're doing most of the hard labor, even though that's kind of controversial, they could give, you know, Africans some of the labor as well. Um, I just think that, um, you know, Africans have to, I, I, I don't know, they may skip by that. They may skip by the la- the uh, physical human labor force straight to the um, AI, artificial intelligent, robotic labor force. Mm-hmm. You know, they could, I, I heard China presidents in, invest in 60 billion into China and into Africa, you know, they could buy a, a couple of um, drones that could do a, a lot of physical labor, mm-hmm. you know, bypass all that in, in and advance within 10, 20 years. Mm-hmm. You know what I heard the, uh, I was listening to a YouTube program on Africa. I, I, you know, folks, tr- if you haven't try listening to news from other parts of the world, oh, it will yeah. truly educate you. This nonsense that we get in America, where you turn on <laughs> CNN, you turn on MSNBC, and all they talk about is Donald Chump 24 hours a day, you ain't learning nothing. How, did, how, how many people people have watched Al Jazeera? I watched that. I watched. There's a bunch of them, brother. That's, but I was listening to brother of what, what, what's the brother? The brother who's the president of South Africa now, uh, in both, uh Is that is is that is am I saying correct? Yeah, yeah. He was at this meeting that they had. I'm a little worried of China, brother. I'm going to make that clear. I'm a little worried of what is really behind their what 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 is their real um what is their real agenda because it's just like a Twilight Zone movie. Remember the Twilight Zone episode where you had these uh aliens from another planet came down to earth and they they acted like they were friends and then they gave the humans a book and they told them this book contains everything you need to know about our mission here. We're here for peace and to work together with you. All of a sudden, they start sharing technology, just like China's trying to share technology. So they started sharing technology with the people. Then they start offering people to go back to their planet. And people were getting on ships to go back to the alien's planet because the aliens were, they were eight foot tall and they portrayed themselves as friends, right? And so some people were skeptical of the aliens and they kept trying to figure out, we got to decode this book. What does this book mean? Right. So as people were getting on the ships and flying up to their planet, someone finally figured out what the book meant. By the time they figured it out, they were already blasting off to go back to these aliens planet. And someone found out that, you know what the book was? It was a cookbook that said how to eat humans. <laughs> it was a cookbook on how do you eat humans. You know, Twilight Zone's kind of weird like that, but that's my concern about China that yeah, they're looking like they're a partnership with Africa now, but what's their what's the bigger agenda that they have behind all of this? That's what I wonder. And so uh brother uh, President Obosa said that Africa has the resources in the ground that they can trade and barter with and China they don't have anything. They just make stuff. Yeah, so, nobody has anything really except for Africa and the Americas. Americas still have minerals too. Uh, yeah. Don't don't let them fool you. But um, they're yeah. all they're all lands of melanated people. Yeah, you're you, right. You're right. This is this is what happens when you start to move a huge population of your people to the city, mm-hmm. and you start to control the um, agriculture. I feel like um, what starts to happen is, you know, China is like they're they're advancing so fast that they're eating themselves out, and they're not replenishing themselves or their um their huge progress to the point where their birth rates are starting to decline. They have to abandon cities that they build. They're called ghost towns or, or um, ghost cities, and they just need to um they they. They need a way to use their their workforce, and it has it's, it's tied into their economy. It's, it's tied to to their um currency. You know, I believe if they don't use this um spending power or, or this or this um economic power, then they will 
it it, it will be like a reverse collapse. It, it it will be like a a reverse progress in a way where they will start to collapse and de- decline even more. Bacho, Bacho, Aquaba, greedy Kofi. I'm Kofi. Hey, well. hey, thank you for that, brother. Now I have the proper pronunciation. Oh, so Kofi, Aquaba, <laughs> Aquaba. Quaba, yeah. that's the proper pronunciation of your name? No, no, Aquaba. Aquaba, that's welcome. Oh, are Quaba. you? No, see, oh. I'm silly right here. What's the that's proper three, three, three. Quaba, Quaba, welcome. That, I love that. I love that, COU. Uh, the brother that's on the panel, what's the proper pronunciation of your name? Who, me? Yes, br- no, no, no. Yeah. The brother. Oh, yeah. I don't have the proper pronunciation. Can you say it so I can get it? Yeah, down? I'm CRU. That's Culture Revolution Underground. No, Ray. No, no, no. <laughs> no, CRU, the other brother, the brother. Oh, uh, Kofi. Kofi. Okay. Oh, oh. I got it right. I got it right. Kofi. Oh, yeah, Kofi. yeah. Yeah, Kofi. 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 Check this out. This is another concern I have. I was uh listening to Brother Dinah's program, Search for Huru, and he had a brother from Africa that was on there, and I asked the question. Uh, China is investing a lot of money in Africa, which means if you're going to invest in Africa, you want to return on your investment. Nobody invests money just for free. And my concern is if Africa, let's say Ghana, for example, where I believe in Ghana, they're building a uh, some sort of railroad system or train system, if I'm not mistaken. Let's say the people of Ghana, for example, are not able to pay back that loan to China when China is looking economically to benefit, then that puts China in a debt, which means that get, that puts Africa and that puts Ghana, for example, in a debt, which means China can now dictate anything that they want because they've got them by the balls because they'll be possibly in debt. This has happened in other places uh, that China has given money to. So that's a little bit of a concern, my brothers. I must bring that concern up with this partnership that Brother Mimbosa was saying was going to work today. Um, so I'm a little concerned about that. But uh, I got an answer for that. <clears throat> yes, sir. Um, you're going to find it probably a little weird, though. But um, so when everybody goes broke, right, the richest man is not the richest man anymore. He's just a regular person. And everybody got to get it how they live. Hmm. So if that were to happen, in my opinion, um, Africa still has all the resources. Africa still has the longest living people on this earth, depending on theory. But it it definitely wasn't China. It definitely wasn't Europe. So we're still going to be here while they're still begging for their, their, their money that we owe them. We'll still be here. So I don't I don't see it as a problem. If you got monopoly money and the game is over, you still got real money in your pocket. You still have real resources. Yeah, this when you're when you're loaning out out money, I'm not sure if if China is acting like an IMF where you know they could topple you know governments through like loans. You know they could be like, oh, you know, you guys wasted a lot of our like re- resources for like having this war against us with the um, Haitian revolution you know you owe us 500 million dollars and they w- w- with the currency they could kind of stop your economy because you need oil you need um trade to like come in but then they've been being sanctioned now can china sanction africa africa already have the resources there you're telling me they could sanction in Africa, where the resources is already there, you can't stop. You can't stop the resources from coming in because the resources are, are, are already there. What you can, what they can stop is um, loaning the money. Yes, they can stop. Um, you know all these products from like coming in. You know, Kantanka of um, Ghana. You know they have parts coming from um, Alibaba. You know they they really need that. I, I feel like the t- by the time that happens, Africa should already have their prefabricated things with 3D printing. But why do you think why do you think Hillary and Barack took care of Gaddafi? Because Gaddafi IMF Africa on that. Everything on gold. All their oil, all everything they trade out of Africa, you gotta pay for in gold. And Gaddafi had a whole lot of gold. So that was gonna throw all of their plans off. Well, well, keep, could, in, keep in oh, mind okay. that Gaddafi was 
Uh, and this probably plays into what exactly you just said, COU. Um, Gaddafi was in the midst of unifying Africa under one currency. He was trying to unify all the uh, African, all the, let me correct myself, all the different countries in Africa under, because if you notice the one thing that <clears throat> I believe keeps Africa from being truly what it should become is the fact that you've got to get these different countries in the continent, all 54 of them, 50 of them or so of them. Plus they got to get unified so they have their individual flags of their individual countries, but they need to be unified under a complete, uh, in my in my opinion, uh, a, a continental flag as one, as a continent, and to have and to control their resources as one. If Africa was able to do that, which is why they had to get rid of Gaddafi. See, Gaddafi was around for what forty years, whatever. They knew what Gaddafi was, what he was, and then the minute he wanted to. Unify them under a currency, and then another thing that he had that the, the world longest world. living after water since since Solomon. I'm sorry to exactly to exactly, but they had water resources, and if I'm not mistaken, Li uh, uh, Libya is one of the most uh, educated as far as ac as far as their educational system and and, and yeah, literacy of their something. people. About and, that, they got the the human rights thing all the way up or something. I read in in a British magazine. Yeah. So what you do when you get rid of Gaddafi, you break everything down. Now you can put in a puppet government that will do the bidding of the United States government. Um, and now you have the unification of African people coming together collectively. That idea, it gets squashed. Um, you know, that's, wh that's why Malcolm X had to, had to go as well. He was looking at, he went from what was happening in America to now a global perspective. And trend. remember, it was Malcolm X who said he was planning to bring the United States under charges from the war, war crimes against humanity, against people, and they had to they had to get they had to stop Malcolm X from. And King that got that. down with him too, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, if King would have lived long enough, um, they said that King was getting tired of being sick and tired that he was getting closer to the Malcolm X philosophy as Malcolm X was getting closer to his philosophy. They were both changing. They were both almost beginning, beginning to morph into each other. <laughs> I believe, I, well, I'm not going to say believe, but from what I've read, uh, King's, uh, he got more towards Claude Anderson. Him and Claude Anderson was like, yeah. like then. it's all yeah, about that's, that's money, true. economics. We need our money first, our land, our this, that, this, that. We built this. So, so COU, since I have you on here, brother, and you said that you didn't agree with some things I was saying, and I want to know, what is it that you don't disagree with? Because we may find out that we may not have many disagreements. We may just have a different way that we look at the world from our experiences. So if you don't mind, what is it that you have a difference of opinion and something that I might have said? Um, I cannot remember uh, oh. the specific <laughs> things right now. Now, but even how we've been talking right now, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We didn't, we weren't on the same track, you know what I mean? But we we're going the same direction. Well, of course we can't be on the same track, brother. We got different experiences, brother. We got different, uh, we've been in contact with different people. We've had, I mean, we just had different experiences. I may have a different way I look at the world in you and you have a different way you look at the world in me. But at the end of the day, if we're going, if we're looking for the liberation of black people, if we're looking for what's best in our people, then that's what's more important than anything else. As long as we're trying to go in the same direction, but we may have a different way of getting there. Exactly. So that's why that's also why I'm on your channel all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we're always following the same places because we don't necessarily subscribe to the same uh the w same way of doing things, but we'll get it done. We got to kick ass. Then you might take jujitsu. I take Krav Maga. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? Kofi yeah. might just run. You know, man. What I mean? I've been yeah, fighting. I've been fighting in the streets of Queens and Harlem since I was young. So okay, that's all I yeah. got, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know what I'm saying, but it's, it's different ways of doing it. Like I grew up boule. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Jack and Jill, all of that shit. Oh you wow, wow. But also, I was conscious, though. You know what I mean? So I knew what was going on, but shit, I was too young to uh, really know that my privilege came from that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm about to, um, I'm going to do a video, and I'm about to drop some uh, 
some, I'm going to drop people's tongues. I'm going to drop people's notions. I know um, that people have their views about the boule and what we call the black elite and how we see the black elite looking down upon the everyday uh, working class or everyday black person. But I'm going to I'm going to definitely hurt some. I'm going to have to hurt some hearts when I do this video. <laughs> the reason why I'm going to have to hurt some hearts, because I know the boule very well. Mm. And the reason why I know it very well is because I'm about to name every single person that has been a part of the boule, as you know it, or what we would call the divine nine, which I have been a member of the divine nine for 27 to 28 years. Now I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an alpha and I'm not ashamed to tell anybody that I'm an alpha. I've been an yeah, alpha bro. for 27 years, but I'm about to bust some uh, bubbles on you because those of you who say, well, I don't like the boule. The boule is this, the boule is that. Well, you know what? After I expose to you people that are members or have been members or are members of the boule alive and have passed, you might as well take their posters off your wall. You might as well stop listening to their music. You might as well take their stop. You might as well stop saying that that's your leader. You might as well stop saying, um, um, uh, let me let me bust one of y'all bubbles already. How many of y'all out there love Khalid, Dr. Khalid Muhammad? Huh? How many of y'all like Dr. Wow. Khalid Muhammad? Dr. Khalid Muhammad is a member of Omega Sci Fi, or he was. He's in there, he's in their Omega chapter. He's in the, the chapter of where you go when you pass away. Okay. Mm. Dr. Khalid Muhammad was a member of Q Sci Fi. Mm. Now, now I'm not gonna now. Now, how many of y'all gonna turn your now? How many of y'all gonna say that Khalid Muhammad was a sellout? That brother worked hard for his people. Yes, he was a member of Q Safe of a black fraternity. Yes, there are things that black fraternities do that are positive, and there are things that may not be so positive. You know, you talk about the pledge experiences, people don't like it, things happen. Yeah, I'll give you that. There's some things that happen. There, like any organization, you're gonna have some individuals that carry themselves of a high standard and then you're going to have individuals that are doing stuff you know not too good now let me bust your bubble how many of you are fans of huey newton a founder of the black panther party raise mm. your hands Damn definitely it. a fan should i hit, should I hit my, my last my, name <laughs> should i hit my bill okay i'm gonna bust some bubbles okay huey newton that brother god rest his soul let me hit my bell because some of y'all need to come to class with me. Mm. There go my bell. I got to <laughs> fix that. There go my bell. Anyway, we're not going to do my radio broadcast tonight. But look, look, look. Huey Newton is a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Okay? Mm. Now, how many of y'all love y'all some Dr. Martin Luther King? Take his picture off your wall. Okay, stop listening to his speeches because Dr. Martin Luther King is a member of my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, founded at Cornell University. For those of you who are saying that, well, I've heard people say this. Well, you know, these organizations were created by white folks. That's a goddamn lie. There, there's Alpha, levels to this, too. There's, yeah. there's like levels even Alpha, within yeah. Alpha Phi Alpha was created by seven black men who went to Cornell University. By the way, there was a lot of black people who lived in Cornell and up in, in Ithaca, New York at the time. They were uh, they came together because they were a minority on the campus. They were dealing with racism in the 1900s. Can you imagine what that was? So they formed themselves into a social studies club as a way to black men to help each other to get through school, support each other. From that idea, they came up with the idea to become a fraternity. Why? I'm going to tell you why. At that time, if you created a black organization on campus, white folks would try to rid you off. So what they did is they came up with the Greek letters as a way to fool white people into thinking that we wanted to be like them. But most of the um, black fraternities and sororities, we're not trying to be like white fraternities and sororities. We have our we, we have a lot of African roots. My fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha, what is our symbol? Our symbol is the African Sphinx, the Egyptian Sphinx pyramids, baby. Black, our colors are black and gold. Why? Black is the people, gold is the value, gold is the riches. Okay. Two of my founders were Egyptianologists. 
Okay. A couple of my founders are part of black history, founded universities, black universities. So before you start talking about organizations and well, the boule this, and I know folks didn't listen to brother, uh, what's the brother, uh, God rest his soul, a uh, brother uh, who came out with talking about, he exposed the boule. Brother Kirkland is his name. God rest his soul. God, if I'm saying his name right, if I'm if I'm not saying his name right, I apologize. Somebody put the proper name in the chat. What's going on? Food, clothing, music, and shelter. Brother Logic, that's my man right there. That brother is the truth. I go over to his channel. I get my. We talk about stuff. We have debates about stuff from a logical perspective. That brother looks at things in a different way that makes you say. Mm -mm 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 -mm. shake that head shake that mind up that brother is the real deal been very supportive of me i do have to get him on to interview him just him alone but as i go on here so yes there you can say there's some things about the boule that's sort steve of elitist. Coakley. yeah steve coakley so i gotta get thank you brother steve coakley who i have a lot of respect for steve coakley but this is the sad thing about steve coakley do you know that brother died with, with little to no money in his in his pocket. That brother died sick. Where was the so-called black conscious community to help that brother when he died the way he did? That brother put out a lot of knowledge and people swear by Brother Kirkland when they talk about the boule. But yet when that brother needed help from black people, from what I understand uh, my research and listening to people that talked about the brother, when he died, the brother died penniless. OK, nobody came to his aid. Yet that brother was given knowledge to our people. See what I'm saying? So. So. What I'm trying to tell you, died that same way. Too? Yeah. Brother who? Say it again. W.E.B. Yeah. And W.E.B. was a member of my organization. Well, so there were a lot of black people that you look up to, that you revere, that you enjoy listening to, that have been in science, entertainment, business, that have done things that you sit up there and you say, uh, how many of y'all love Ebony Magazine and Jet Magazine that was on your grandmother and your mother's table as a child, okay? Guess who created that? Brother Johnson, he's a member of Alpha. So what I'm trying to say to you is there are members of this quote unquote boule, whatever you want to call it, that have done some great things. And some of you like these, like, like these black, these great black figures. So if you don't, if you, so, so, if you got a problem with the fact that they were part of the boule or they were part of a black fraternity or sorority or what have you, then take the damn pictures off your wall. OK, the great, late, beautiful Aretha Franklin, who I'm about to drop a exclusive video. Some of her last interviews that she did with Brother Joe Madison, that sister is a member of Delta Sigma Theta. But y'all loved her music. Huh? Huh? Come on now. No. So so I'm going to stop right there. So when I do this video or did, do this live stream and I tell you who all these people are that are members of these various organizations, I'm going to have to bust some people's bubbles who got the, to look up to these folks, who love these folks, who went to school on scholarships named after some of these folks. I'm sorry. I'm going to bust your bubble. Mm. And I'm, now I'm not saying that. Um, that you don't that elitism isn't is is right. No, it's not right. I don't look. Look, I'm a member of Alpha, but I don't walk around treating people disrespectfully, thinking I'm better than somebody else. No, no. Like I said, you're gonna have knuckleheads in all organizations. You got knuckleheads in NAACP. You got knuckleheads in Al Sharpton's Action Network. You got knuckleheads in any. And you got knuckleheads in the church. Hell, you got preachers grabbing girls and putting their breasts around them. You saw that. That mm -hmm. that I'm telling you right now, Aretha Franklin, God rest her soul, she deserved better than the funeral that they gave her. Oh that funeral gosh. was an embarrassment. What hey, was yeah, going on? I, it was an embarrassment. May I, Not may her, I, but the people who ran the funeral were the embarrassment. Not Aretha Franklin. I love her. It was the people who ran her funeral who were, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying, were disgraceful. Go ahead, brother, and talk. Brother no, Frank I, said, I, the yeah, go ahead. I just want to co-sign you real quick. Um, everybody's, Malcolm was a pimp. You know what I mean? Exactly. So since you stopped believing in Malcolm, he was a pimp that reformed himself, right? Yeah, and that, that's why I agree with you. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's done, did they little dirt before or whatever. 
you know so uh to me is is like what 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 are they doing good and you know what i mean have they changed their minds about things there's there's a couple youtubers out there that were good at first started talking shit in the middle and now are back on code you know what i mean uh so i don't down anybody for going off track just as long as we all get back on track because nobody's perfect you know uh, you're absolutely right brother you're absolutely right all right, I'm going to mod up my brother, food, clothing, and music, and shelter. Brother Logic, I got to mod you up, brother. Good to have you over here. Um, but check his channel out, though. But when you go over to his channel, I'm telling you right now, he has a rule. He has a call-in show, too. And he does fantastic with his, uh, with his uh, green screen. And I got to get my green screen on, like Brother Logic, too. Got to work on that next. But uh, when he, he has a rule... When you call in his program, just be respectful. And he's going to challenge you with logic. And he has some great shows where we were talking about religion. And he said, can you, um, can you define, uh, can you uh, speak upon religion without, what is it, logic, that you said? Brother, brother um, I should have you come on the damn panel so you can explain it yourself. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm gonna hop off for uh, info, man. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, I'm out to. Uh, I'm gonna end the stream, and uh, but what I'm saying is the brother has a very good program. He really challenges you, you to look at things in a logical manner, get your emotions out of it, get your beliefs and your religious belief systems out of it, and look at things for what they are at face value. That's what I like about brother Logic: food, clothing, music, and shelter. <laughs> All right, brother uh, Cooper, I'm going to have to get you back on again, brother, for another yeah, I do a live stream. So I'm going to yeah, have to get man. off. This was this was a quick. OK, brother Logic wants me to send him the link. So I think I'll send him the link right now or I'll put the link back in there. I'll go ahead. and If any of y'all want to stay on for a while, a little bit while longer. Let yeah, me I'm going to stay on. Definitely. Yeah, let me uh, get brother Logic. In All here. right, brother Kofi, man. I'm going to jump All off. Right. All, All right. right. Brother, All right. See are you. Brother Kofi, stay with me for a moment. Be let me let uh, brother Logic in. To the chat room and, and, and into the panel before we end it. Let me put this in there. There you go, brother. Um, brother Logic, boom. Come on in. We'll talk for a little bit. I want you to explain because I can't. Ex I, you know, you can't explain a person's philosophies better than they can explain it. You know. Mm, yeah, man. This is this is deep thought, deep reading, and deep research and discovery you can't just hear it and mm -hmm. re regurgitate yeah. it yeah now i didn't see i didn't bring up the balut the 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 the, the uh see i can't even talk now i'm so tired <laughs> brother gab <laughs> talk media the bule i didn't bring it up to be disrespectful to people i'm just want to be logical and let people know that the very thing that you may have some issues with you have people prominent that you probably enjoy and like that are members i mean and that doesn't mean that they're all evil people. Peace, peace. What's going on, Logic? Brother, welcome. What's going on, bro? What's going on? <laughs> so, brother, I've been sitting up in here praising you, brother. But um, can you break down in your own words when we were having that discussion as it relates to religion, where you were coming from when you were telling people, hey, you got to get the belief. I, I, well, you explain it, brother. You explain it. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it just it just it is is a real um just a simple um concept and um i just try to break it down to them it's like if you can have a conversation about religion without using two words facts i mean i'm sorry beliefs and faith then i can conversate with you mm. but i never had a person that can do it every time they want to discuss religion it's based upon faith and then faith is pretty much is that you just got to believe you got to have that. Um, it actually faith dumbs you down because faith is pretty much the cornerstone of the, uh, on the Bible. Because it's, it essentially give you that. Um, hold on a minute. <laughs> it give you that. Um, you got to pretty much have confidence in something that you can't prove. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm. That's and, right. Yeah. And that it, it okay. gets a lot of people. Um, it gets a lot of people and we don't realize like how powerful that word 
faith is. And then when you go into beliefs, it's it's either power. I mean, it's powerful too because ideally to believe something, you don't you don't necessarily know it exists. You just gotta believe. You know what I'm saying? Just like if uh, and I I, I tell a, um, a lot of times like, do you know you're getting paid or do you believe you're getting paid? You know you're getting paid because you already put in the works. Mm-hmm, when, you, mm-hmm. when you do a forty hour um, a forty hour work week, you know you're getting paid for forty hours. <laughs> mm. That's right. But if you sit back and then they'll try to spin and say, no, no, uh, I work, but I believe I'm getting. No, you don't believe it. You know that. If they don't pay you, do you you gonna go right to that manager's office and say, look, here go my stuff. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I I work 40 hours. I clocked in 40 hours. That's right. But see, they they want to still use that word belief, but see, that word is it gives, like I say, regardless, the whole Bible, without them two words, it don't stand a chance. <laughs> it don't stand a chance. You're, I mean, you know we was on that show the other day. You know how adamant they was about, you know what I'm saying, the existing. They don't know because you don't know Jesus exists. You don't know Jesus exists. You don't know the Red Sea got split. You got faith and you believe it. And them two words right there holds up their whole uh, religious concept. Brother Logic, let me ask you this question, though. And to you, Brother Kuvi. Yeah. Um, very simple and very simple and sweet here, brother. Most people who have these beliefs got these beliefs from another human telling them this. So when I was a child, brother, I used to do a Bible study as a youngster. So think about it. if you're a young kid and you're now, I call it being indoctrinated with these views, it's already imprinting on you. It's already impressionate, press, putting an impression on you at an early stage of your life. And then you grow up with this being reinforced, even whether you go to church or not. OK, it's being reinforced in you in so many ways that. When you are asked the questions that you ask, brother, they can't answer that question because they can only speak in belief because that's all they've been taught. And when you ask people, where did they get it from? They can only tell you that they got it from the book. And we know that books can be distorted. Mm. And there's many books of the Bible. People don't even realize that. It's it's made up of many, many, many books. But we're getting just just this one, right? And so if if I'm correct there, Brother Logic, if I'm correct, if I'm not, you correct me. But um, so we people get this belief system from all these, from everyone that's been telling them, from their grandmothers, their grandfathers, from generation to generation, that Really, their belief is based on what a man told them or some human. Mm. Yeah. And we know that humans lie. They're flawed. They exaggerate stories. If I was to put, uh, if I was to have 10, if I was to have 10 people lined up, 20 people lined up, 20, and I was to whisper in one person's ear and tell them to pass that message all the way down to the last person, wouldn't it come out different from what I told the first person? Mm. Yep. You, you, you understand where I'm coming from with that? If it's even logical, <laughs> yeah, yo, no, it, it is though. And, and what you just said is is is, is I'm a, uh, I call it my three pillars of destruction. Okay, and it, it goes from indoctrination to belief to tradition. Because once you get that point where you indoctrinated it, you injected it in that community, you injected it in that society, that culture. To the mm. point is that now. They, they you don't see the wounds anymore you see what i'm saying like yes. if we go back we don't see the, the wounds of our ancestors we don't see the wounds where they was injected with this religion we mm. don't see and we don't and we ignore the crusaders that went around the world cutting off people's heads because they didn't want to associate themselves with christianity so so many different levels we don't see the wounds we don't understand we don't understand what happened in slavery today because we wasn't the ones today they got hit with that whip. But mm. we get that from a perspective of, you know what I'm saying, the process, that first pillar is indoctrination, that injection. We don't know that. We don't feel that pain. Now they made us believe it over a long period of time. So now it's at a point where it's tradition and we pass it on to our babies just like we was there when it done it at that time. 
the way they pass us slavery, mm-hmm. they make it seem like we was the ones that was on that boat. We was on the good ship Jesus. We was on all this. The way they pass all this to us, it was just like we were sitting right next to Moses when he split that Red Sea. Because guess what? It went from indoctrination to belief to tradition. And we continue to pass that cycle on and on and on. And nobody would ever question that injection. Was mm. it real? Mm. What's, what they also question is whether, you know, they, they ask you, do you believe in God? And I'm like, you know, I'm assuming that we're all God's children, so you shouldn't even have to ask that. Yes. And when you say that, you know, that kind of gets them confused. Well, and, and then they go into the Bible and be like, oh, well, you know, do you believe in this? Do you believe in this? You know, there's like a lot of like specifics that I feel that are naturally ingrained in us. But since you don't know the specifics, then now there's a difference in and that almost like feeds feeds them, you know, feeds their ideology. Yes. To want to like push their version or push who they are on onto you. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I should be accepted as a human. You know, that's almost like asks me, am I a savage or are are you a human? But you know what they did though? They took our energy. And I'm explaining what I mean when I say they took our energy. If you if you sit here and like me, I, I I I still like to study the Bible because I think it's a weapon of mass destruction. It's the weapon that 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 stops critical thinking. Uh, but if you look at the phrases in the Bible, the whole time when they use the term God, they talking about your Father. When you saying that, when you say terms like when you pray, thank you, Lord for giving me my daily bread. Now, let's use that in realistic terms. Who give you your daily bread in, when you was a child? My your father. father. Uh, your mother, okay. oh, well, I mean, it depends <laughs> on your family structure though. But you okay. know what I'm saying, if it's, if it's a single mother household, she plays that role as a father and a mother. Okay. So now, if you look at the prayers, you know what I'm saying, it was, it was, it was natural concepts, they associated with natural things. Uh, the basic concept that, you know what I'm saying, that they, they, they use that my father wake us up every morning, right? But let's be realistic. Who wake us up every morning? Either your father or, your or the son. Okay, I'm getting or, or, or the son. You know what All I'm right. saying? The son, you know what I'm saying, represent the change of the day. And then as that son come up, even you can be the laziest person in the world, but you're going to get tired of that sun shining in your eye. Mm. So that was a natural concept that they took and they took something that was spiritual, something that had energy to it, that you can feel the energy come from the sun telling you it's time for you to get up. The new day has begun. They took that and they turned it some, some more spooky and some in the contents that they can control. And that's what is it, happening now. You know what I'm saying? It, it, mm-hmm. it, it, if you look at the Bible and you look at the most popular um, religious terms, and I'm going to say religious because I really feel like it is a higher power, but you know what? That's my theory. I can't go in detail to sit here and prove it, but I can go and look at nature. I can look at different things and I say, it's something out there more than me, but I would not use that to indoctrinate somebody because the indoctrinating is I can give you my explanation. I can give you my theory, but see, I would not force you to take and accept it uncritically. And that's that's indoctrination by definition. You know what I'm saying? That somebody got to set a set of beliefs uncritically. If I feel a, I feel a certain type of way, and then I can sit here and lay out different things, just like I'm talking to you brothers now and the audience. I can tell you different things now, but see, I'm not gonna force you to do it. I'm not gonna force you to to, to think like I think. I'ma just try to share. We are conversating, and then you know what the when we think it out, you say, okay, that makes sense. But you know what? I'm going to still go to my three pillars of destruction, indoctrination, belief, and tradition. And I'm going to still love you regardless. But I'm telling you that everything that we didn't try so far, every religious system, everything that we try so far didn't fail. So why we continue to use the same tool that we know that will continue to lead to our destruction. So would it be fair to say that we should look for something that 
is going to lead to our success. Ooh, man. Yeah, I, I mean. Because I, I personally believe, I, for me personally, I see myself more as a spiritual person than someone who uh, has an allegiance to what we would call an organized religion. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and, and part of the problem with organized religion from my perspective is that is that it is organized and it organizes people into these sort of cult like uh, thinking <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, separates people. Like for, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, my um, uncle unfortunately passed away two months ago. We already knew that he was uh, sick. He was in and out of the nursing home and what have you. My mom was planning to go back for the service we were. And because my father on that side of the family, my, not my father, but my uncle, I'm sorry, on that side of the family um, was engaged in the Jehovah Witness religion. They have they, they have an ideology where if they deem you as being part of the world, you're a worldly person, then they will um, 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 they'll say you're excommunicated. You can't uh, attend the funeral. So they took my mom's name. Uh, even though my mom was raised in that religion and she broke away from it as she began to get enlightenment herself, but she wanted to go be a part of the, the, the part of that. And they took her name off of the list to be able to attend. And they will kind of shun the rest of your family just because they don't subscribe to that particular religion because they want to deem you as being part of the world. Therefore, they kind of separate you from your family member. That, to me, is what cults do. That's cult-like yep. behavior. Yep, yep. and that, and, and cult. By, I mean, that that is that's that's that first pillar. That's indoctrination. They force you to accept them of beliefs uncritically, so you can't criticize. You can't think through it, though. But I like to look at it as just like you know what, like I said, this is something that you can take from the Bible too. Everything in the Bible was talking about builders building, but if you look at it. In a in a uh, age, just say if you look at the how how houses has evolved over time. If you look at it, I put my bathroom right next to my stove. Right, you know that whole concept won't work because you got daddy there, mama trying to cook or whatever, and daddy coming down, he handled his business on that toilet that's right next to the stove. Right, that's a blueprint fail. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now eventually what will happen is that you will have to sit here and analyze the, you know what I'm saying, the, how everything is constructed. And then you got to ask yourself a simple question. Does it work? And then if you're looking at it and you look around and you see that this don't work, then you got to sit here and you got to be honest, even though your mama had the, 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 the toilet next to the uh, stove, the, your grandma had a toilet next to the stove, but guess what? It don't work. You need to remove that. And then you need to do like we do it today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You put a, a door around and you put a little vent in there. You know what I'm saying? And you put it as far away from the kitchen as possible. Yes. And see, that's us being having that ability to critical think and to be able to analyze and assess things. And then we will always accept things critical. We will always criticize things. That's what make these shows powerful now today because everything is up for question. We we criticize it. The only thing that ain't up for question is guess what? We need food, clothing, music, and shelter. Plants need food, clothing, music, and shelter. And guess what? The source of all this is the sun. See, that, you can't question that. Ain't nobody can come up here and debate that. Ain't nobody. You come back, hey, I want to debate, you know what I'm saying, the need for the sun. It's no debate. It's no debate. I'm going to debate the need for food. I'm going to debate the need for water. <laughs> I'm going to debate the need for shelter. I'm a, yeah. yep. It's no debate that. You know what? Logic, you're 100% right. I had a chance to be baptized in the fire of the BGS um, live stream panel this past weekend. And he asked me, how would you begin to build a new government and build a new nation? What was the first thing you would need? And everything you said or things that I said that were or that things that he mentioned that you got to have people need shelter. People mm -hmm. need to know what kind of sewer system you're going to create. People need to have security. So when you build a nation, you got to also give people security. Yep. Right. And, and, and you know what that security is? That security is that clothing. Because you got to realize what do clothing do? It protects you from the elements, right? Yeah. 
But he but yeah. he was also saying that you got to have the protection of the compound that you're living on too. Mm -hmm. So you got to have the physical protection and like you said that clothing, the spiritual protection and all those different things. So yeah. uh, you're right. And and he he made another big point to me about that movie Matrix that it was the machines that kept everything in order because people were living in a dream world because the world had been destroyed. Yeah. And then once you take the machines and the infrastructure away from people, they'll go buck crazy and say, hey, 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 we need this. We need that. So he was he was that was the analogy that was being used around how even though there's things about America that we don't like, there's things about the system that's put in place that gives us the food, clothing and shelter mm -hmm. and security. Mm -hmm. So even though there are things we don't like about America, there's some things that we're protected by being here compared to living in another country. So yep, cuz cuz in in America it's 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 because they so-called live under this this system of democracy and system of fair justice and all that kind of stuff like that. It is a better uh society to be in to make a change within you. But I I said it to a lot of people it's something that we got to start with. Cause I, I asked, I asked a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Black people, a lot of this question all the time. And then I said, what is the number one resource on earth? And then they'll go and they'll say, uh, land, diamonds, oil, gold, platinum, all that. Can and I make, then, can I make a guess? I'm going to make a guess. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make, maybe I'll make the right answer. I believe it's water. Okay. Yeah, water. Water. Uh, and see, and see now, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drop a bum with you, brothers, right here. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. So just say if you got all the water in the world, right, and it is you and a hundred people, and then I got ten thousand people. Who got all the water now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, <laughs> the one with the, on, the, technically yeah. we we could save more water, but you got ten thousand people, and so I can take your water. I can exactly. take your water. <laughs> see, you see that mentality. See, is we don't understand that humans is the number one resource on this earth. They also consumers of resources. So regardless, if you have, but okay. see, that's why the religion and the system it took that away. It took that ability to look and say, "Hey, look, you know what? I don't got to be suppressed by this shit. Either I can go ahead and." And I can fight them battles, or I can go ahead and do my own thing. I don't have to always be a part. But see, that's why it's it, it been indoctrinated, especially black people. Because what do we call a single mother with eight kids? Hmm. <laughs> well, we tend to call them a burden on the system. Yep, we call a burden on the system, and we even call the kids bastards. Bastards, that's right. Yeah, and we call the kids bastards. So now, coming up, a woman that have kids that a man should look and say, you know what? This is a resource, not a resource. See, because we all, you know what I'm saying? Yes, she's a financial burden. But see, if you get all of kids mind right, think of the power that you will have. Think of, you know what? I want to open up an information man, Starbucks. Guess what I got? <laughs> you I got possibly I got the resources. Get the resources. That's right. I, I got an account. I got everything that I can possibly want in that resource. But see, they take that, they, they destroy our mentality with that. Mm -hmm. And they make us focus and shrink down to these little small families, a wife, a dog, uh, two kids, and a white picket fence. They didn't struck us so much. And we we just so in this immediate family that we don't think about dynasties. See, cause you look at the dynasty structure, the dynasty structures were built on resources. If you look at the warlords, warlords was a, a, some ruthless dudes who had a whole bunch of wives and a whole bunch of kids. And then guess who didn't mess with them? Whoever was in charge of that land. Yeah, because he had the resources, man. This, this is good information. Well, well if you had bastard children then those bastard children could easily go into the workforce they'll be the slaves if you separate the families you know you could easily create slaves you could create a um what they call it a trick in i heard Tariq say a, a, a trick and whole relationship where you know 
the man will just be seen as just having children. They split up. Then those children will go right into the workforce, never working for themselves, but then working for, you know, their masters, which yeah, are the that, landowners. Yeah, but see, that sound, see, that, that, that sound, I, I, I'm with you. I think I heard Tyreek say that before, though. Yeah. yeah. But see, he's, he's talking from a point. What well, it's conforming and believing everything within the system, conforming and believing everything you read. But what I'm trying to get to a deeper understanding. Imagine if we can sit here and you can have a man and a woman, mm-hmm. and you and you realize the dynamic of our body makeup, right? And then I mean, this going says a whole deep topic though. But if you think about this, the purpose of a man and a woman's sex organs is to do what? Procreate. Procreate, right? So now the only reason that sex is enjoyable is because guess what? The creator discovered that guess what? It got to feel good. It got to be a forced me- mechanism in there to force people to procreate. Because if sex wasn't good, how many kids would we not have? <laughs> that's hmm. true. That's true. That's true. And because, that's, a, that's a deeper uh, thinking, though. And, and for those and, and for those folks that follow the Bible, uh, what weren't there statements in the Bible that said, "Go forth and multiply"? Yes, the whole the <laughs> Old Testament. <laughs> Damn, <no. laughs> it's the highest form of human achievement. I feel. Yeah, yeah, but see, it, it, it's it's for a reason. But see, we've been programmed today that think our relationship is based on sex. But see, what you realize. And you still see fragments of this all in different places. I had the chance to go to um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, um, Abidjan, and I saw mm. different aspects of it. And I looked at a man and his wives, and then it wasn't the term that I was used to by relationship. When I looked at that, they developed partnerships. And then when you develop that partnership, a man and a woman, because guess what? If you take away the sex organs of but men and women right now, right? That means you got no breasts, you got no hips, <laughs> you got no nothing. You oh my God. No, really. If, if you realize that a woman body is constructed to support her during childbirth. So now if you take away her ability to birth a child, what you will do is that you will have just human beings walking this earth. Now watch this. Everything would be based on a partnership. Now they gave us the ability to recreate within ourselves. But see, when we recreate within ourselves, we worry about each other and we forget the product that we produce. The mm. only reason we together is to produce kids. Mm. That's the only reason I can have a partnership. Many information man can have a partnership. And guess what? It's no feelings. It's all wet business. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing when you're dealing with a woman. It's it's business. I mean, and I don't mean to make it sound like it, you know what I'm saying? It's it's old crazy uh, factor work on there like that, but it's business. The purpose of a man and a woman is to reproduce. And then now that bond or that partnership is, is set together so that that woman can give that child that nourishing need. That man can be that protecting that family. And then what happened is that who you're protecting? Each other and primarily the kids. Because the kids will go on and build that legacy. See, we don't build legacies these days. You know what I'm saying? We leave debt for kids. Mm. We leave debt. When you, when you die and say, okay, well, I'm good. I left my kid a house. Well, you left that kid some debt. We don't mm. leave these legacies. So now it, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger aspect. And it's like so many different layers to this conversation when we got to first realize that we are the number one resources of human beings on this earth. And once we understand that, we will appreciate, you know what I'm saying, the ability and we appreciate birth. We won't call each other bastards anymore. We won't sit here and we won't put down, you know what I'm saying, the woman that got five kids. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because in, in any other society, they look at that as a gold mine. Mm. That's deep, though. But hey, <laughs> well, can you see? You know but, but see, that's because well, in America, we're taught to think as individuals and not in a collective manner. 
So we'll tend to look at that and say we won't see the um, the power. And um, if and you are absolutely right when you say let's imagine if you can shape the minds of those young children to do mm -hmm. something great, you're going to get a powerful result in the end. That's the only see. So a lot of times we'll focus on the fact that, well, we got women that have that are single mothers and we'll focus on the negative and we'll say, well, the child will grow up, especially if it's a male child to be effeminate. Well, mm -hmm. that's why I always say, well, if you're a black man and you have time to mentor a child, mentor your own child, um, you have the we have the ability to reshape their minds and where they're going. Yep. Where they possibly could go. Now, I hear a lot of brothers on YouTube will complain and just say, well, you know, it's the Pookie and Ray Ray effect. You'll hear that. You'll hear this and that. Yep. And then when it comes time to roll up your sleeves, nobody wants to get involved because they'll say, well, it's not really my problem. But they want to complain about the problem when yep. we can reshape. And I have reshaped. I have helped in reshaping the minds of young people who I'm proud. I can probably say are doing great things today that they would not have been doing had they not been given an opportunity to reach their potential. That's about yeah. opportunity, in my yep. opinion. Yep. And you know what? And see, this these conversations is hard for people to grasp. But see, it's just like religion because they've been injected with it. They don't have that, that puncture wound because that puncture wound been gone so long ago. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They don't have it, so they don't feel it. They don't feel the effects. They didn't know nothing existed different. So now that puncture wound already didn't happen generations and generations ago. Now they believe it. So now it's tradition within them and they'll pass it on. See, you're like, so, I mean, hey, I mean, I have they, a question. I, go. I have a question. Would you if all right, would you say that the the white man's denial of the black man, like meaning if, if we procreate with him, you know, their their whiteness would would be no more. So would you think would, would you say that that resistance of, of racism is what is creating this self-defeating system of um, in, in inflated money and declining birth rates? Though America is, quote unquote, the wealthiest country. Europe is, quote unquote, the wealthiest country. China is, quote unquote, the number one economic country. But their birth rates are declining. Africa has the lowest per capita and the highest birth rates. So would you say that they're there if 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 you're denying you know procreation with with other humans and you create a, a system around that, would you say that's why we're in this like kind of dis dysfunction where we worship currency versus worshiping ourselves? Human yeah, yourself as a human resource. Mm. Yeah. But I, I, I I'll just like tied all that in from from what um yeah. Uh, food, shelter, clothing, just said. If I, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, you just call me logic, bro. Just call me logic. logic. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just check this out. See, this is the thing. And logic, tell me if I'm wrong or right. We don't see ourselves as the human resource because we're caught up in so many other things. But guess what? Those that we would deem our enemies, they see us as a human resource because from the time you were born from your mother, they mm -hmm. already can determine how how they can they can determine your life expectancy and how much money they're gonna make off you. How they can do it by what you're gonna have to pay taxes, right? They they always tell you two things is guaranteed: death and taxes. So they already <laughs> know from the time that you're born, they're gonna make this much money out of you. And then I've heard the you know I've looked up stuff. I've looked at stuff like Geist and all that kind of stuff. You know the conspiracy theories where they say that um that when you're born. They're on your birth certificate, they've got a stock exchange number for your behind. They're making money off of you from the time you were born. Think about it. When you were born, somebody has to pay that damn bill. <laughs> so you yeah. you come into the world with debt, okay? And mm -hmm. you leave the world in debt because somebody got to put your butt in a box or cremate you or pay something. Shit, shit costs money. It, it's a trip. Th this The world that we live in is a trip. We come into the world with debt and we leave the world with debt and sometimes leave our kids debt. Ain't that a crazy trip? Yep. But you know what's crazy though, information man, and, and, and probably close to the, the what the brother was saying also. Um if think about this, if resources really meant anything, then why is the most resource rich country on this earth is the poorest? Yeah, exactly. If Africa 
Yeah. <laughs> What's the, I, I've always said this to myself. That's it's true, Africa, man. It's very true, brother Kofi. If Africa was to, what if, what if we woke up tomorrow and Africa was to just to disappear off the face of our landscape and no one would know where it would happen to it? I argue that we might go back into the Stone Age. Mm -hmm. Because in order for us to do what we're doing tonight, for me to get on this YouTube and communicate with a brother who's way in another place of the world and to communicate with cell phones and do all this, you need the minerals to do this that come from mm -hmm. Africa, from the continent of Africa. Our yes. cell phones wouldn't work. We would be going back to Barney Rubble. Okay, yo, <laughs> yo, Africans didn't need none of that stuff. They were chilling in Eden. It was hot. There was food around. Um, humans advanced, and all of a sudden they needed all that shit, man. I, I don't like. I don't know how how you could come out the mountains and be like, you know what? That mount that that rock in Africa is the same rock as as ours. We're gonna use that for like metals. We're gonna use that for guns. And 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 and, and to be honest, it's kind of controversial because that could have came out of Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. You know, or it, it could have came out of um, China. Or, or that type of information could have came out of um, Greece. But mm -hmm. that that is key. We weren't we were in Africa. We weren't using none of these resources. We were living on top of it, but we weren't using it. There was no need look, for it. Look, but brother. see, even now, though, even now, though, even now that we know that these resources uh, calculate to a lot of what we could say revenue or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's still the most mineral richest place, whether it's natural resource, whatever you want to say, on this mm -hmm. earth. And therefore, yet it's still the poorest. And that's where it just only proves my point that, like I was telling you, like you can have all the water, but guess what? Let me have that power. Or, you know what I'm saying? A deeper understanding is that, I mean, even with the word um, power, we don't understand power because we don't understand that that power is that ability, you know what I'm saying, to, to push that official authority on somebody. It's not like the power, like the the I'm strong. You know what I'm saying? It's that power is, is controlling the group, it's possession, and then it's influence over others. See, that's true power. Because mm. now I have influence over you. You can have all the minerals you want to. Now, whatever mechanism I use, whether it's by force or also by a book or your energy, your energy, your spirit. If I use your emotions against you, that's what the Bible does. It uses emotion against you. So now what happened is that I don't got to fight you for these resources. I'm going to outmaneuver you in so many other different ways. That's why now you see all these missionary teams going to Africa. You know what I'm saying? So now it's, it's, it's good to give than receive. You see what I'm saying? That mentality has, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it destroyed that country. So now I'm telling you, that it's good to receive. Mm, mm. It's better to give than receive. Yeah, and they better. do it. Yep. And now, you know what? To be honest with you, Africa now, I think I, I went to Africa almost 20 years ago. Mm. And then the place that I see now is totally different. Mm. Because now what you can get, you could you Africa will give you a bag of diamonds. Mm. For some CD players, a TV. I said CD players. Dang, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so they for some Apple TVs, some TVs, and then you know what? A, a blueprint to a structure that you you see. what I'm saying. Yeah. That see, that's what I'm saying. When you go through them three pillars, that indoctrination, that belief in tradition. See, they still injecting, but see, the shots that we get today, we would not know we got them shots into five, six generations from now. Mm -hmm. We get shots now that we don't even know we getting shots. We seeing the shots from Africa from a long way, but we a lot of people don't notice it because we not examining it. We looking at it in a way of like, oh man, you know what? Hey, um, uh, the white man is coming doing this. The white man is coming doing this. No, they selling their souls for pennies. Hmm. And then nobody is seeing here. And then when they look at us on TV, who do they look at? Nicki Minaj's, 
Gucci Mans, Michael Jacksons, Princes. Who do they see? So now mm. when they see that image, that image become their reality. And wow. then now regardless of whatever, right or wrong, that reality is going to be what exists. Homosexuality, transgender. You know what I'm saying? If I, if, if I tell my great great granddaddy that this is to be the world I be living in, he will probably tell me I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. But that shot was injected in him. Mm. And then now all we're doing is we seeing it. And I said all the time, especially black people, we ignore shit till it come knocking on our door. We don't care about transgender and homosexuality until it come knocking at our door. Until our son come in the door and say, Dad, I think I'm in love with him. Now we want to raise a fit. <laughs> but we didn't say shit when Information <laughs> Man, uh, that, I'm just saying, Information Man family was affected by that's that whole fucked up community mentality. Well, we see old oh, Ray Ray got shot last night. We close mm. our windows. We don't want to call the police. Mm. But then as soon as we get shot, we go out. Oh, I can't believe it. Somebody call the police. Anybody see what happened? That's destroying us, that mentality. Mm -hmm. And that's destroying Africa. That's destroying every, every African nation. And guess what? The people that's doing the injection are the people that's winning. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, uh, brother Logic, we're gonna have to do this again. I'm gonna have to get you on. What I'm gonna have, what we're gonna do, brother, uh, when the time is right for you, because uh, I know that you're very busy with what you do over in your channel. And everybody, make sure um, at, that you check out brother Logic's program, Food, Clothing, and Shelter. If I'm saying it correct, uh, check that brother out. He's 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 got it going on. He's he's. He's, he he pumps it over into Twitch as well, but uh, he comes on. He has more early morning shows. He has late night shows on the weekend. He even does programs where he does a little, does some DJing and you can just like, <laughs> kick back and listen to him play the DJ, DJ different music and just kick back and relax and enjoy yourself. And if um, but but when then he has a call in program where you can call in and talk about a variety of different topics that they bring up. But the only thing that's very important to know. When you go over to this brother channel, is come in with respect. And when you call in, he's going to challenge you to think in a logical manner. So you can't, you know, you can't, uh, you know, I, like I said, I've got my baptism by uh, BGS. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, uh, they uh, you know, uh, they sort of, uh, you know, what do you call it? Haze me when I went up in his. But they gave him my respect because they said, brother, you know, for you to come up in here like that info, man. So, uh, you know, baptize him by fire. But uh, Brother Logic, he put some baptize on fire on your butt, too. Uh, but but they have a lot of good. They have they have they have fun and on this channel. They have fun. You get some knowledge for your ears and your mind. Um, you get some good, real talk. OK, OK. If you don't like to hear real talk, real raw talk. Then you need to stay the hell away. But if you like that, jump on board. So definitely support the brother. Um, he's been very supportive of me too, brother Kuvi. I have to get. I have to have you come back on here, brother. Yes, uh, when yes. I have some other, when I have some other panels and what have you. So I wasn't expecting to be on this long tonight, but hey, I just went with the flow. Uh, but I want to remind everybody: um, if you haven't saw uh, Brenda Johnson, I love you. She's in the chat room. Her sister is from London. Uh, make sure you get a chance to replay this video because this video was really about the uh, poor, the po Pullman's porters. Because this is Labor Day, I did a little bit of thing about the Pullman and how Labor Day has a hell of a lot to do with black folks, particularly the, the Pullman porters, who are responsible for a lot of our labor laws in today's society that we are benefiting from and other people are benefiting from. So that's where I really begin tonight. And then we got into discussion. As you know, I usually do Q and A sometimes after I do, you know, live streams like this occasionally. So I want to thank everybody in the chat room who was here tonight. I'm tired as hell. I got to get up super early and get into the, uh, you know, got to go to my plantation as well. <laughs> yes. Can, can I leave a shout out? Um, check yeah, some on, of my, Check some of my short films out on my page. Um, oh, you do Kofi short Oju. films, brother? And yes, yes. I've made two two to three short films, and I'm working on another one okay. called uh, Marion Afrima. Okay, brother, we got to get and, you um, on. I got to get you on the platform and do an interview, brother, about what you're doing. Okay? Yes, yes. I'm Topics about, like I'm, these. Yeah. I like to film. 
You know? Okay. I'm about trying to promote brothers like yourself that are doing things. You know what I mean? This is what black folks, what we should do. If someone's doing something positive, bring them onto your platform, interview them, find out what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, we can't help each other. Who the hell will? Yes, <laughs> yes. What, what, what's his channel? Um, Kofi O. Newton, um, Couples oh. of Afrima. Oh, can okay. you type something in the chat? Um, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me I, do I, this. I get out of the chat. Let me do this then. Um, Kofi, let me, uh, I'm going to have to mod you up, brother, so that you can drop that information in there. Okay. So let me find, because if you're not, if you're not modded up, you won't be able to drop anything in there. So okay. do you have, if, are you ready to be able to, let me see if I can, can you do me a favor? Cause I'm tired as hell right now. Can you just write anything in the chat room so that I can find your avatar and then click into it and, you know, mod you up so you can drop what you need to drop in there. Yeah. Yeah. I just oh. wrote something. Okay. Let me see. I'm tired as hell. I yeah, I, got <laughs> I, 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 I just clicked on his, his, his little thing. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that's yeah. what I should just do. I'll yeah. just drop. You know what? I'll do it. I'll just drop your uh, mm -hmm. I'll drop your YouTube channel in the chat room. And plus, brother, I'm yeah. going to have you on my program anyway. Okay. I, need to, okay. I need to somehow uh, we'll figure it out. I have to get some email from you or something, brother. And um, uh, I don't care. I, I'll put my email in the chat room. But on Logic's there. page, too. Oh yeah, that I was, got that was I some deep right now, brother. That was some deep stuff right there. Man. All right, I'm subscribing to your channel right now. Everybody in the chat room, subscribe to this brother's channel. Yeah, give him, I a, just, little, give him a little support. Yeah, give I just support. I, I dropped it in there for you, bro. Oh, All okay, right. thank you. Yeah, it's thank in you. there. Yeah. Oh, you thanks, thank, thank you, brother, for doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna get. We, I'm, I'm gonna bring you on when the time is right. We'll connect and. Um, and we'll interview you, brother, and, and talk about your journey in, in short filmmaking, brother. This is great. Yeah. All right, man, man. Information, man. Hit me yeah. up anytime. You know how it is. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what I did, though? I, <laughs> I was subscribed to your channel, but yeah. I, ain't hit, I ain't hit the bell. Because I was like, man, oh, I didn't see man. Hey, man, I, with you, I, man. I know, man. That's the biggest dumb rookie move. I was like, hold on. I said, I don't never see. I be seeing him on, oh, shit. I said, he don't never go live. And I, <laughs> I went and looked at your channel. I said, hold up, man. He do go live. I go like quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, and then I had to actually break it back and say, you know what, man, they ain't hit the bell, though. I, but I, I'm bailed up now, so you know what I'm saying? Hey, but I you got know, you, though. But you know what I noticed is happening, though? I'm just letting you know, maybe this is another one of my conspiracy theories. <laughs> I, I, I think, and folks in the, in the chat room will attest to this, I think you two be doing this, because I, I have subscribed to people and hit the bell and knew I did it. And when I went back to their page for whatever reason, I'm like, what? I'm unsubscribed and I'm um I'm I didn't hit the bell. I said, what the hell is this? Right. And I've even had people come in my chat room and say, Info man, I was blocked from the channel. And I'm like, I know I didn't block you, and I know nobody else did. Mm. It'd be some funny business going on on YouTube, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but YouTube is it is it's so damn big, man. That 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 you gotta. It's a little um. It's a little form, man. That you go create a form, mm -hmm. and it it'll tell you like that. That's the biggest problem with YouTube platform. They have they have yeah. to work through now. Yeah. It's actually um because you know Twitch automatically everything goes out. The notifications, all that goes yeah. out. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? Twitch is not, you know what I'm saying, nowhere compared to biggest what YouTube yeah. is. I'm so, think I have a I have a Twitch account and I'm thinking about trying to see if I can play around with that a little bit. I, I got I got a lot of things that I have to work on that I have in store that I gotta work on. Just yeah. I mean, I'm so busy in my personal life, but I'll do the best I can right now. But uh let me hip you to somebody that you should really check, you should check out um uh brother logic, and he's very philosophical philosophical and that's my man in the chat room right now brother gab talk media check him out check out his youtube page matter of fact i'm gonna put his channel in there as well no check I got, him out. I'm, I'm clicking on him now you're faster than me man <laughs> I'm yeah. as hell. but that yeah. brother is philosophical he's real he's 100 percent real he's a family man you can't get no real realer than gab talk media give that brother some support everybody in the chat room who may not be familiar with Brother Gab Talk Media that's been talking to him in there, uh, go over to his channel and subscribe. Support that brother. Matter of fact, support all of each other. Just subscribe to every goddamn body. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's what I say. That's what I say. But I'm going to end it right now, Brother uh, uh, Logic. Thank you for being here, Brother. You know I'll be back over on your side checking oh, out yeah. what you're doing. Uh, brother Kofi, we'll get together. 
Let me, uh, brother Kobe. This is what I'm gonna do for you, <clears throat> and I don't care because I, I, uh, uh, yeah. I have all kind of ways to block people out that I don't want contacting me. If they try to contact me with bullshit, I know how to deal with them. <laughs> I, I got, I got, um, I got peoples that work in Homeland Security, so I can, <laughs> I, can right, I'm, I'm, I can identify I'm, I'm, people. I'm I can identify people. Though. All right, brother. Uh, all right, peace all out, right. man. Peace, all right, peace out, Kobe. All right, peace. All right. Kobe, I'm gonna put my email in there. You take that down, brother. Send me an email when you have an opportunity. And then uh, we'll set something up, brother. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm putting it in here right now. I'm I'm tired as hell. I got to go to bed. <laughs> Twelve midnight here in California. I got to get my butt in bed. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop that in there right now. Cowave06 at gmail.com. So brother, okay. take that email down. It's real simple. Write me when you have a chance, and then we'll figure out a time. I got so many things. I got so many things in store. We'll figure Same. out the proper. We'll figure out a proper time to get you on board on the program, brother. Okay. All right. That's a, All right. that's the plan, man. All right. Thank you for being here, okay. everybody out there in the chat room. Uh, this was an unexpected live stream uh, 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 slash uh, panel discussion. Uh, Gab Talk Media. I would have loved to have had you on the panel tonight, brother. But you know, I got your back, brother. And like I told you before, um, you know, me and Lions Den, we do these little podcasts together. But I want I want to get you on. I want to still get those soundbite recordings from you to add to the podcast. And I also would like to do some podcasts with you too, as well. Me and you together uh, occasionally, brother. I think uh, we make a good team. Um, uh, me and uh, me and Lions didn't make a great team together, and I think you and me will make a great team putting together some projects and stuff like that, brother. So I just want to put that out there to you, Gab Talk Media. Have a good night. Um, tomorrow is another day. Sleep well, live good, um, and know that you are important. Know that you are important, Black people. We're going through some ups and downs, of course, but we are important. You are the change that you're looking for. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you are the person. Be that. Everybody that supported me tonight for this late night, I was surprised I was going to get these many people. Um, I have to say that I was very happy when I had Brother B. Miles on the other night and did a live stream with him on Friday night. And I I had about, what, it was about 114 people came in there at, over a period of time. And I thought that was fantastic. We're growing, we're growing, we're growing. But at the same time, you know, that I'm not afraid to go to big YouTube channels and smaller YouTube channels and support, okay? Especially you, smaller YouTube channels. They're doing big things. Like I told you, check out brother Life Machine Power. That brother is trying to grow his channel. The brother is doing a fantastic job. Life Machine Power is incredible. He's trying. He just needs more of our support. He wanted a ladies' pound tonight. He had Sister uh, uh, Classical Ruby on there, but he needed more women. And so that's why I'm reaching to, to the ladies out there in the chat room that are still around. Find that mother's channel, Life Machine Power. Subscribe. He's trying to interview people. He's trying to get panels together. Support this brother. He's from Canada. He's got the beautiful Caribbean accent. He's very fair, very measured. With that said, good night. This is the Information Man Show. And you know I'm going to leave you with some of my sound effects. A clap to you all. Information is power. Information is power. Good night.